we are the layman's podcast and uh I don't know you can follow us on Instagram at layman's podcast and facebook.com forward slash layman's podcast. We're not sponsored. Follow us on Vibe. Today in the studio, we're joined by Declan, Hello. guitarist from A Mill and the Sniffers, Melbourne based punk rock band. Yeah. Touring. Uh, they're in Perth or they were in Perth for a show last night at Mojo's, mm-hmm. potentially a show tonight at the Rosemount. A Frio. Fremantle. <laughs> Perth. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm sure they'll want to have that distinction, mate. <laughs> so yeah, gu- guitarist extraordinaire and and old friend, and uh, we've uh, caught up for a few beers. So yeah, just a couple. Fucking yeah. strap yourselves in just for a, a. We're getting shit faced for a for a real, real raw ass. We've got the incense, incense ready burning. to go. Mm-hmm. The incest, yeah, <laughs> the love of the incest. Yeah, yeah. we got the VBs. What should we talk about first? <laughs> oh, my oh God. Man. We've been chatting at the Scotto for like hours now. So, yeah. And I think we've covered everything pretty much. All so. bloody. <laughs> surf- I think we've only got the surface though. Yeah. On the, yeah. We've, skimmed the, we've skimmed the surface. I like the fact that your manager managed Chopper Reed. Chopper Reed. And the, the general consensus is that you're more difficult to manage, to manage. than Chopper Reed. That's yeah. fucking great. That's cool. That's yeah. something to hang your hat on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I said it as a joke. I was like, oh. Are we harder to manage than Chopper Reed? And he was like, Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, oh, true. Ouch. Chopper Reed's a bit about it. Yeah. He knows about it. Yeah. Todd probes. Yeah. Well, well awesome. Chopper Reed's been to the top, so he's professional. Yeah. And we're exactly. at the bottom, so we don't know what it's like yet. You know, mm. not institutionalized. Yeah. Thank God. Ooh. He's a veteran of the Australian celebrity scene. Yeah. I didn't know R.I.P. He was, yeah, I was saying I didn't know he actually died. He died, yeah. I thought he was still alive because of that comedian that impersonates oh. him. I was like, oh, that's Chopper Reed. He, yeah, he's cool. No, no. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought Yeah, I yeah. thought for a long time that was just a character, but that's... that's well, Chopper Reed is a character. Yeah. Chopper's not his real name. Yeah. It's a stage name. Mark. Mark Brandon Reed, that's his name. Yeah, you said a lot of it's, uh, it's like embellished, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's like... Yeah. It's theatrical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. No one wants to buy... The truth. We're all characters. We're Can't all playing characters, truth. really. Yeah, Think just about a character. it. Mm. You go to a job interview. Are you yourself? A slight character. Oh. You're a, yeah, you're a character. Yeah. Just a, a mini hallucination for everyone else. Yeah. You know, this is really me. Yeah, you're at Capitol. Actually. You got your arm on the wall. You're talking to some girl. Are you, are you yourself that's or are you a character? I, that's yeah. not how I operate. <laughs> I put my head on the wall like a savage. Just hey, babe, like it's a fucking right seventies movie. <laughs> no. No. When was the last time you asked yourself? I don't if you're talk a character? to women, huh? <laughs> right. I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and I scream myself, "Am I a character? Am I a character?" <laughs> so I've got, I've got a, I've got a eyeball-sized mirror. Yeah, like in True Detective. Yeah, sick. <laughs> Matthew I, McConaughey like stares into an eyeball-sized eyeball? mirror and yeah. just sees what eyes. You should see your pupil. Yeah. It's a pretty intense way to wake up. Mm. No, but I actually, yeah, I, no, I look at myself in the mirror and just. I look at myself in everything. I look like I'll see this Nirvana thing and I'll just be like, <gasps> "Other reflection, hey, good, yeah." Anything. I know. It's like a, I think I've, it's like an OCD. I thing. think it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, I got the same thing. It's, yeah. it's like it, I was like, like, "Oh, I'm narcissistic." It's like, "Nah, I'm not narcissistic." <laughs> you could see um, it. You as just that. take pride in your appearance. Yeah, I take pride yeah. in my appearance. Or you're just scared of not existing. Like, am I still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm still there. I'm still there. Yeah, I'm still sure. There. I'm yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. I'm real. Yeah. I'm real. Not a vampire. No. Yeah. Mm. God damn. Yeah. But I'd love to actually get into specifically the band yeah, at for the sure. start of this. Let's, and yeah. it will devolve into some fucking debauchery. Yeah, we'll t- <laughs> that will tell some good As stories. As if talking about the band is a debauchery anyway. Yeah. Uh, Abel and the Stiffers. I, first of all, I love the name. Yeah. Yeah. I only found about <laughs> you guys a couple of weeks ago when we were actually like mm. – Mentioned you guys, and mm. I was like, Oh, yeah. I kind of vaguely knew about you from like the past the stories, yeah, the past, <laughs> the stories, Sub- my subconscious. <laughs> yeah. They're Facebook, all true, Facebook. unlike Chopper, these okay. stories are true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, That's first of all, that's a fucking sick name. Uh, well, yeah. trait and the mm. Sifers, yeah, we almost had like a completely different name. And oh, yeah? I swear, yeah. like, if we had that name, we would have gone down a completely different path. We were really close to being called the Amel Sniffers. Instead Ooh. of Apple, add the stiffers. Yeah, I can oh, see. Add the, because it's see like where a, that could have yeah, gone. Yeah, we'd be still fucking just bumming around in Melbourne if we had a shit name like that. Yeah, that'd yeah. be pretty hard to go overseas, would it? Yeah. God damn. We are, we're, yeah, we're Apple stiffers. I oh, know it's a bad name. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 We're we're drug addicts. <laughs> we're drug addicts. Where, where did it start for you? Like you've always you've always in, like enjoyed music. Like I remember yeah. when you were here. Actually, I remember you taught me one time. I was at your house. It's probably the only time I went to your house. Yeah. And you taught me like "Come as You Are" by Nirvana. Really? And I was yeah, like, dum, oh, dum, now dum, I can dum, play like yeah. something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I remember that. But you were always into music, and you were always playing yeah. on the guitar. So you, I guess you just kind of kept doing that in your spare time, hey? And then you just got yeah, good enough was, to be like, yeah, oh, fucking. It was like um, I don't know, therapeutic for me. Yeah, I, I thought musicians were really cool and I always just wanted to be really cool. So yeah. I learned guitar when I first moved to Melbourne and I I just played it. It was just like a good way to sort of chill out and Yeah, yeah. Like zone out. You know, put the put the put the brain on standby or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so then yeah, I mean I was just like obsessed with every single aspect of music from like the you know, celebrities, the stories, the cool shit that they do from like, you know, what cars they drive to hairstyles they had and mm. what they studied at university. And I was like, fuck, you know, musicians are so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to yeah. be. What kind yeah, of musicians right. yeah, were they? Oh, sorry. What, what musicians? Yeah. What were the guys? You I was really like, this girls. is really embarrassing because um, I guess it's not really cool anymore. But when I was like 17, 18, I was like obsessed with Nirvana and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, um, that's fine. That's <laughs> yeah. totally fine, man. Yeah. When people are like, oh, what's your guilty pleasure of like music? I'm like, Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's your guilty pleasure? Fuck, my guilty pleasure is Nelly Furtado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that, she did that bird song, I'm Like a Bird, yeah. I'm Like a Bird, yeah. yeah. I crushed Ricardo that song. <laughs> oh, shit. There you oh, go. shit. Is yeah. that a story? Life-changing moment. I was on the way to playing indoor soccer and I was like yeah. playing that song. I had my hand out the window like this. Like, oh, like, like a doing bird. the dolphin thing. Yeah, the I had Rady in the yeah. car, shouts out Rady. Uh, and then I just, this person stopped too quickly at like an orange light. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, oh, that would be loose and mm. I'll be and fuck, I could just go through it. Yeah. But just they oh. rock back and I crush my car. Shit. To our, oh, black bird. Oh, that'd be kind of away. blissful, hey? Yeah. No. It'd be great if your soul was leaving your body as you, as you were listening to. Yeah, oh, if I died, it would be good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But instead, I just had to pay for yeah. the other person's yeah. insurance. It was a fucking Lexus of t- t- a bit. Was it a Lexus? <laughs> no, it was a, it was a Tesla. I was Damn. driving the Tesla. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, because I'm balling. No, I'm not. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I was, yeah. yeah, I was really into John Frusciante. I thought he was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned like. He's an enigma. Yeah. yeah. I, I learned as many of Red Hot Chili Peppers songs as I could at my school level, which was very basic. Yeah. But um, it was weird. Like I could play like lots of really good Red Hot Chili Peppers songs and I couldn't play anything else. Mm. And something that I was striving for was being able to like just pick up the guitar and not play a song. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'd yeah. like pick up a guitar and I'm like, I know how to play this song. I play the song, but then like, what I really wanted to do was just make my own music, like create. Not, yeah, yeah. So that's that's. It took me a while to get to that. Yeah, yeah. But I got there. Now so what just, goes into being able to create your own music? Is it you you sort of fleshed out as much that you know how to play and what exists, and then you're sort of like, oh, yeah. now I know how to sort of kind of do different things and put different things together. Yeah, and- music's all like rules, really. Like yeah. there's lots of rules and and uh, follow the rules. It's like you know Oasis they ripped off like heaps of other people's music, and it's like all that music was really good music. So it's like if that's you know that that's what good music is, and it's like following like a rule. Mm. So they followed the same rule, and so then you just have to follow that rule too. And it's just like yeah, pentatonic scales, shit like that. You know, yeah, yeah. if you want a happy song, you just write it in major. If you want a sad song, you write it in minor, and that's it. It's just like two rules for it but that's like just i don't know western music that that's all i know about yeah yeah like oh, like i mean i look at every song that i've written as like i go like oh that's the like i don't know it's like oh that's the sunny boy song that's the that's this song like that's that's where i got this one from that's where i got that one from that's the motorhead song that's the acdc song they all have their own vibe yeah like in yeah. my head they're all like completely different but i think listening they probably sound like oh yeah that's animal and sniffers probably yeah, yeah. How people yeah. It. and if you haven't heard animal animal <laughs> animal and the sniffers animal sniffers animal and the sniffers uh check them out on spotify or yeah. youtube or whatever and we, then come back we're on spotify and welcome back there yeah, <laughs> yeah go, pause it right now have a listen listen to the first 20 seconds be like yeah. oh, that's shit come back you know, if he doesn't start talking about something interesting soon, I'm going to stop this. That's what they'll be like. That's how, I mean, that's, that's what's, that's my thought process. Oh yeah. 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 Cause uh, just, you guys are fucking awesome. Thank yeah, you. As I was saying, like 
Will introduced me like sort of two weeks ago. I was like, I didn't know I was looking for your kind of music, but yeah. I was. Oh, I was like yeah. actual like Aussie punk, like seventies nostalgia, mm. that kind of thing. Like I imagine how my parents would have grown up or something. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah. if my parents were cool. Yeah, I mean <laughs> your parents, you might they, they might, might be at the game tonight. It could have been cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. They, they definitely won't be. They definitely won't be. But yeah, no, nah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's really good when you find the music that you've been looking for. Like, yeah, yeah. I got into like um, I was listening to Nirvana and Red Hot Chili Peppers, and then they were like always citing that they were really into punk bands. So I was listening to the punk bands that they were listening to. I was like, I can sort of feel that this is what I want, but it's not exactly what I want. And I found like more like punk hardcorey sort of stuff, like real rough stuff. Not like hardcore because hardcore is a bit like polished and straight edgy and shit. But like when yeah. punk got like a little bit crazier, that's like what I was looking for. And I found it, and I was like, this is my shit yeah and then it's the same when i found like australian rock i was like yeah this is cool do you get around the sex pistols and stuff like that yeah i do that's another guilty pleasure yeah like, i think anything that's not australian and, and like rock and roll that's like I, that's my guilty pleasure yeah yeah, yeah. But, um yeah I, I was listening to them i really like them i think steve jones is cool if there's like a guitar like this is a weird thing that i got but like if there's a guitarist with like a similar hair color to me then i'm like oh like that could be me and so, yeah. so that's why I think Steve Jones is cool. I like Noel Gallagher, John Frusciante. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my, this is my thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I like Sex Pistols. I think they're cool. I think they just got like catchy songs, you know. Yeah. God damn, yeah. Do you like Sex Pistols? Yeah, I do. My my dad kind of introduced me to mm. them. He's is he from songs. Manchester? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Our bassist dad is from Manchester. Oh yeah. Yeah, he likes Manchester. Man, me and Manchester. I like Manchester music a lot. Like I got like. A tattoo that's like a Smith's lyric. That's not a guilty pleasure. Yeah, I don't yeah. T- like. I don't like. You know, like here I am as like the the Aussie rock punk dude, and then I'm like, oh, I actually like the Smiths, and I like having a feel, <laughs> having a think. You know, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it's yeah. not a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Motley Crue's another gu- guilty pleasure. Um, someone gave me um a Motley Crue biography before we left for America and I was reading that on the plane. I was like, this is all fucking bullshit, but I'll just keep reading it. <laughs> <laughs> and then now I like listening to the music. So yeah. it's actually hard. It's like something I don't want to enjoy. Whereas like Sex Pistols, I'm happy to enjoy it. But like Motley Crue is something I really don't want to enjoy, but I do. Mm. That's why it's like ultimate guilty pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can it, your guilty pleasure be an influence though? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, still Hugely. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to be. Well, it has to be the right thing. Yeah. Like Motley Crue, I'll definitely rip off a Motley Crue riff because their yeah. their riffs are pretty good. But I wouldn't rip off the Smiths, but they're definitely an influence. Oh my god, I'm gonna be like caught on camera trying to open a beer. Yeah, you're really <laughs> struggling with these beers. I, no, it, I had it last night too. I swear the, to God, they're so much easier to open in WA. The pa- I mean, in, in Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably right. They're shipped over, so they have to be mm. packed tightly. I, I don't know. They're hardened. That's they're, bullshit. That's just me being. A loser. The, the nullaboard does mate, things to oh, them. Yeah, mate. It's magic. The, the, the nullaboard does something to everyone. It's mm. a spiritual experience. Yeah. Have you ever driven the nullaboard? Yeah. The yeah, I did. It was ball. like, I'm not kidding. Beautiful. I did it in the worst way possible. <sighs> I did it with my dad, my mum, and my dad's wife. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah, right. So, like, two divorced parents. And How did that all? Wife. Hey? How did that happen? How did uh, well that sort of dynamic? I mean, they all get along. <laughs> and, uh, my dad was moving to Tasmania and he has like a whole bunch of like tools and shit that he had to drive across. I don't know why my mum came. I think she just came for fun maybe or she was moving over at the same time. She moved to Melbourne and I was, yeah. I don't know, I was stupid enough to say, yeah, I'll come too. So, Oh, so you don't have any, none of your family members live here I don't anymore. have anything here anymore. They're, I just got damn. you. I got you. <laughs> That's it. I, I don't have anything. You got me and you got Sean and <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> and Muller. Sean, Muller, but Muller's no, like, in Muller's Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yeah. So, and, uh, what and, are we doing? and Lewis, Lewis moved to Melbourne. So, yeah, yeah. I got, oh. I got like no, I got no ties here. You know, it's weird. Yeah. It's like I didn't have a child. the ocean. Yeah. Well, yeah, which I've never been in. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't go in the ocean. I'm fucking, I'm scared of that shit. Flood I don't, river? I don't, I don't swim. I don't swim at all. Really? Yeah. Like not even in like a public swimming no. pool? You're just like. No. I went into. Do you take baths? <laughs> Do you take baths? <laughs> I have. Or is that? I you have, scared of the shower? It's pretty crazy. No, I'm not, I like showers. Showers are good. Yeah. But um, in Austin um, a couple of weeks ago, it was like my first time in a body of water in 
since 2015, so three years. That's crazy. Yeah, That's a crazy it? thing. It's a weird thing. I mean, um, when I was at Beatty Park once, I saw a poo in the pool <laughs> when I was a kid. Is that it? That, 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 was trauma. Was that, was, that was literally, I'm not kidding, that was the last time I went into a public pool. Yeah. yeah. I a boost bar in the fucking pool. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Picnic. Fuck yeah. that. And, uh, and then the next time I went into water after that was um, – at Brunswick Heads in New South Wales and when I was getting into the water I stepped on I think it's called a mussel. Could be an oyster. What's oh it? yeah, something like that. And it yeah. fucking oh, it cut my foot up so bad. Like proper like layers of skin were just flapping around and I was just like Ooh. this water shit is overrated. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah it yeah, is. It's yeah, like, it's there's terrifying. There's poos and sharp things. You know, the young yeah. sharks. they're sharks, whales, <laughs> stonefish. That's uh, that's like a yeah. literally, like I got a fear. I heard about a rugby player who stepped on a stonefish and died. Oh, and it's like, you know, it's like you, when, when an athlete dies, that's when you're like, shit, man, like life is wild because they're like so fit the and healthy. Physically yeah, it's like just this person's going to live to 120, but it's like this cunt just stepped on a, just got stone stepped on a stonefish. And it's like, dude, yeah. if, if, I mean, if a professional rugby player can die in the – I can die yeah. easily. Yeah. I can die 10 times easier because yeah. I'm not a professional athlete. I'm far from it. I have a legit fear of the ocean now because I almost drowned once oh. in Dudsbro. That'll do. That'll yeah. do. Shit. Mm. Story yeah. time. How did that, how no, did that, that happen? It was just a rip out of a fucking oh, idiot. Oh, just pulled you right out, eh? Yeah, pulled me Fuck. out. Like I had to sort of like. Yeah, watch that. Mm. Sort of just keep drifting over and keep grabbing the sandbag. Mm. I don't like sand either. I don't. Dude, the ocean's powerful. Yeah, it gets all. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't fuck I know, with it. Like, I, I like the thing. It. The thing with like this is pretty. This is a true story. No kidding. So okay. like, <laughs> I heard like surfers they don't eat seafood because they respect the ocean. You know what I mean? And so when I was in high school, I used to get swooped by birds every single day walking to school. And yeah. you know what I did? I took chicken out of my diet, and birds stopped swooping me. Really? Shit, man. Birds, no. Animals know. Animals are smart. They know if you're a surfer and you're eating seafood, you're eating fish and chips every night, they're like, no, fuck this guy. Get yeah. out of our ocean. Yeah. yeah Same yeah. as birds. They're like, swoop him in. Stop eating chicken. Stop eating chicken, can't. I, I got back on chicken. Uh, though. I'm back on chicken. Birds yeah. don't swoop yeah. anymore. You get swooped? No. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. I haven't been swooped in a while. Do you reckon they kind of accepted you and then you just sort of secretly got back no, on the chicken? I, I think no, it was like, like oh. we can coexist. That's what it was like. Oh. It's sort of like. Um, they respect you now. No, I don't think they respect. They're like, you know, it's like, you know what? Obviously, we're never going to get along. So, you know, we'll let you do your thing. Um, you let us do our thing. And I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> I want that, that kind of sense. arrangement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it was fully like, you know, I don't know. Um, Be at peace with I mean, you know, it was it was Israel-Palestine there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Between um, me and the birds. I've actually never been swooped or even experienced really? it or seen it. I'm not kidding. My friends. I feel like I'm not even like, I feel like I actually feel like a slight, like slightly embarrassed that mm. I haven't. Really? It's such an ex- Australian experience, but I've like yeah. never when, experienced it. When, um, I think I just have a really good harmonious relationship with yeah. nature itself. That's great. So yeah. yeah lucky you. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I step on sharp things in the water and birds swoop me. Nature doesn't like me. <laughs> I'm an urban boy. Like, like, my friends threatened to stop walking to school with me because I was getting swept by birds so much. Fuck, really? He was like, dude, you get – it was probably like – it was fake, but like it was pretty embarrassing. He was like, dude, whenever I'm with you, birds just fly at us. And he was like, I can't walk with I can't you to school anymore. anymore. Yeah, so I was like, shit, We're I better over. stop eating chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's the logic. It's probably the chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No shit. I mean, like, I was desperate. Have you seen that map? They like every spring they bring out that map of Australia and like this is the hot spots for getting swooped by magpies and it's just like oh, do dots everywhere. <laughs> Have you seen that? It's just like don't go here. Like this is like they they it's like the um just anywhere with trees. What is it called? Like fucking community. It's like it's like crime watch for birds. Oh my god! And like so, like if you get swooped by a bird, you put it in the in the thing in the database. Oh yeah. And you're like you know, you have like an app, and it's like don't go here. There's it's a database bird. like Crime Stoppers. Is there yeah. a, is there an app for birds? It might not be an app, but there's a website. There's, a, there's like this is these I've are the hot spots for magpies. Out. Yeah. Oh, I'm we'll put ta- it in the show notes. Yeah, I'm going to tap out and pee. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, <laughs> springs okay. springs just around the corner. So it's like why is that traffic out where you Watch can out. see like where all the traffic is? Yeah. But it's for yeah. getting swooped. 
<laughs> if you're if you're an avid walker, um, this isn't a this isn't a sponsorship. Yeah. But if you're an avid walker, check out the website. It'll be in the show notes. Don't get swooped this spring. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. It's a serious problem. There you have it. Yeah. That's it my has brought to you by chairs. We like to sit at them. <laughs> Today's episode <laughs> is brought to you by BB Victoria Bitter. There's nothing quite like it. Yes. Perth locals better just because of political reasons. Shouts out to Scotto, the Flying Scotsman, Mount Lawley, or Highgate, however you want to look at it. What an institution. That's where, that's where we, uh, that's the old watering hole. And, um, you know, that's where we, I uh, spend a lot of time with, with old Declan. And Abraham. Learning how to drink, learning how not to fucking chuck your guts up and cook your shit in public. Mm, and get banned. <laughs> we, met, we met a great guy called Abraham today. At the spot. That was a story. Mm. Yeah. That was great. He did, said that you look like Ronan Keating and you look like you're from the Proclaimers. Yeah, I still have to I Google that. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Do you know the Proclaimers? I know the Proclaimers. Yeah. I, will out, my, uh, I was just going off yeah. your reaction that you were like, so like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> he's, he must be on point with his. Uh, Mate, Ronan Keating. Yes. And. The Proclaimers together for a podcast. Totally yeah. Rodney Keating, I could see that. With, I was like, oh, yeah. And I cop Ted Mulry gang. Do you guys know who that is? No. no. The 70s Australian rock band. Oh, shit. Well, that, oh, yeah. and you, you, know that, no, you know that song's like, come get in my car. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That David Hasselhoff yeah. covered. Yeah, he wrote that. Oh. And you people have said that to you before, hey? I have, yeah. And a comment on an Instagram photo, I think someone said, Ted Mulry, eat your heart out or something. <laughs> He was good because I knew, I sort of knew from the start. So this dude walked up to us, obviously, for anyone listening and um, told us who we looked like. <laughs> and he built up rapport, but I knew he was going to ask, ask us for money. For money. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, yeah, uh, by I, the yeah. end of his spiel, I was like, I want to give him money. Yeah, I didn't have any did. to give him. Yeah, but that was because he called us all handsome. I was like, yeah. thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. No one ever tells me that except yeah. for my dad. Yeah. I mean, I met this dude in Austin. He came up to me. I was at the, I was at the beggar's. In America, like they, their game is so much more like hardcore than Australians. Like they, they'll go for it. This dude was oh, like, yeah. oh, he came up to me and he was like, "Did you know blah 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 blah?" And I was like, "No." I was just like waiting at the traffic lights and I was starving. And he was just like, "Did you know blah blah?" blah? And he's like, "Did you know that this school is where blah blah blah? This is like the only school that's had two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, which is not true. I actually know that, which is weird. It was, that was a fa- false fact. And he just like listed off like a bunch of facts. Oh, yeah. He was like, do you know how Steely Dan got their name? And it was like, everyone thinks that they're Steely Dan because of this, but it's actually the name of one of their girlfriend's vibrators. And I was like, thanks. Like, <laughs> Didn't cool. you know that. Do you know where I can get a burger around here? But no, nah, like, he, he, he gave me like five facts and then he goes, Oh, how about like five dollars for five facts? But I was like, no, I didn't ask for the facts. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. You just Google five facts. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> what high school have two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks gone to? And I would wait. How does Sealy Dan get their name? I was like, I don't know. I was like, yeah, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> They're but, all wrong facts anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to look them up anyway afterwards. Oh, I didn't even or? bother. I was like, I don't care how Sealy Dan got their <laughs> damn name. You know, like, but you know, I mean, I don't know, like. The amount of people that ask for money, like if you just gave them money all the time, I wouldn't have any money. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, At some point you just, I don't know. But there's, I mean, there's that was a whole the, can that of worms. But that was the first time I gave someone money in years. I was happy to give that yeah. guy money. That was sick. Abraham, yeah. I gave him some weed because I don't have any cash. Yeah, that was I good. was like, he'd probably appreciate that more than anything else. Yeah. I could I, put a little he nugget. He definitely his, did. In his head, uh, he was a glint to his eye and he gave me a wink and he walked yeah, off. Yeah, that wink said it all, man. He was See like... See you later, Abraham. Sweet. Now, now I've got to I'm go set. and engineer some kind of smoking implement. Yeah, he needs to actually probably go buy papers or a pipe or something now. Hey, I don't know yeah, now he's going to get productive. He's either, he's either going to put money back into the economy or he's going to go and I gave fucking him a quest. invent something. I got a quest. I was like, here's this, here's this item with a bit of weed. Yeah. And uh, you get a side quest. Try and smoke that. Yeah. <laughs> side quest. <laughs> Try and smoke side it. Side quest. I don't know what I could have given him apart from money. I've got... Um, Pocket lid. Nothing. Pocket lid. Pretty much belly so. button fluff. I got belly, I got belly button fluff out the door, man. I got yeah. great belly button. I don't know what happened, but... 
I got really deep belly button. Got you like a, wear like, like really beer belly. cotton field shirts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wear a lot of new shirts. That's what it is. Like this yeah, one yeah. is my first day wearing it. Auntie Lee on the back said a shout out. What's up? <laughs> is, this, uh, is this a band? Or yeah, yeah. The Melbourne, Mace, Melbourne band? Mason Mine, yeah. They, they uh, opened opened for us uh, Thursday night in Melbourne. Good kids. Yeah. 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 Then, Lewis went to that gig, right? Lewis did go to that gig. I'm pretty sure Pretty sure we did Mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean pretty sure? I mean, because... Uh, <laughs> did you? So we did Mushrooms. We did Mushrooms on Wednesday night. Yeah. And uh, we watched the State of Origin. Yeah. We, we planned to stay up That's all night to watch combo. the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, like, yeah, we'll watch. We'll just like do some mushrooms, watch State of Origin, stay up all night. Then we'll go to the casino and then we'll watch England versus Croatia. And we were in bed by twelve thirty. Shit. And I woke up and watched the, the soccer by myself. And um, who were you? Who are you going for? I was going that? for England for the first time in my life. Yeah, I was just. I feel like they had like a good marketing campaign with the whole football's coming home. I mm. bought it up. I would have bought a t-shirt if I saw a t-shirt saying it's coming home. I would have bought one. Yeah. It was coming good, home. Also, good. Harry Kane's a fucking legend. Yeah, Just, that's I couldn't. I couldn't point him out. But a I know. hurricane. <laughs> oh, <okay>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, they're, what they're a young team. They're going to be good next. Next. I think they'll be good in the next next World Cup. Next World Cup. Next the Euros. It as could well. be one of those things though, where they come in as favourites and just. Fuck it all up. Like, well, that's what it, that's how it's fuck, always been. Yeah. Fuck that shit. I mean, like, if David Beckham can't win a World Cup, England's never going to win one, right? Yeah. <laughs> fuck that's the, it. Fuck the World Cup, man. Every time we tune into that, tune into SBS, they're fucking fall all over and shit. And they what? get tapped and oh, they fuck no, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is tough. Every time I tune in, I'm like, this is why I don't watch the sport and I only yeah, play Yeah, yeah, shit. Because, like, I mean, when you watch AFL and then you go into soccer oh, and you're just work. like, and you're like, you're just like, God, Mate, if you just didn't fall over and you just kicked the ball as hard as you could at the goals, instead of falling over, yeah. you would have got a damn goal. Because yeah, you watch the Aussie team and they don't fall over. Because it's even degraded them, even if they didn't yeah. like footy or yeah. anything like that. It's still just degraded the culture. That's that what you I... Don't, you, don't, you don't take anything when you're playing spot. When you cross mm. that white line, you're like, I don't care about like toxic ego or anything. I'm just going to actually embrace that shit. That's what I like no, about right? the soccer is they, they go out and they actually play. Like mm. I fucking, as a soccer player, I fucking hate it when I see cunts going down. Especially if you're an amateur player. Yeah. Cause it, <laughs> when cause there's it no money through. on the line, when there's yeah. no money on the line, you're like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. It filters through the culture mm. and then all of a sudden you got a bunch of footy lads telling you that you're a bunch of pussies and it's like, I mean, that soccer, like the sport itself has merit. It's just that there's a, there's a minority that are just a bunch of pussies that can't, mm. and that's like the worst ha- thing. Hack it, you know. It's like then we can't go in. Fucks me off. Australian, the Australian team can't go in and play the aggressive way mm. that they want to play because if they do, then there'll just be like so many free kicks against them. I guess. Yeah. I take pride. <laughs> I take pride in playing hard because it's like. Thanks for blowing that one away. <laughs> <laughs> but you referenced America a few times, so yeah, you. Did a tour. Uh-huh. You you did you did the America. Oh yeah, <laughs> did that's the right. One. Let's get into it. The how? place that's hard to crack. Yeah, as well. When you make it in America, you made it. And how was that the tour in it, in America in general? Was it like you in sold out sort of shows and you were you were supporting King Gizzard yeah, through so the whole tour? Or? We did our own headline in LA, which we sold out, which was pretty good. That you yeah. can just land in a country and uh, sell out a gig, which is nice. That's crazy. Yeah, that's fucking. Where was that in LA? LA, yeah. Where we're in LA, Moroccan Lounge, all right, which has like two hundred. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know, the, I know the place. Yeah, you been that, there? Where, where is that in LA? Is that like <laughs> what's so I did, did Little LA. Morocco? No, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, don't know actually. Yeah, um, I could. I know where it is. I can point to it on a map. Did you get a chance to have a poke around LA as well? Or yeah, we spent a lot of time in LA. I found it suffocating. I just too many people. Too. Nah, it was like coming from Melbourne, where public transport so fucking. Sick. LA's yeah, LA's very freeway. You gotta drive everywhere. You to drive. Yeah, I've seen terrible. pictures of LA and it's like six lanes of traffic in one direction. You see all brake mm. lights and it's they're just yeah banked up. And another thing, they don't have indicators on the cars in America. They just like have the tail light flash. No, they do have the, indicators, but they use it. No, like oh, they actually literally like, don't on, have on indicators. cars. They have like you know how you have like brake lights. The yeah, brake light just flashes if they're indicating. It's like not it like flashes red. Yeah, it flashes red. Either side. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh fuck. Yeah, people people that would, don't give that a fuck in LA. They, I don't indicate. What about, but from the front, it's orange on the like if you were to see the car from I think, the front, it I would don't be know, actually. That's so weird. It's Why would legitimately they... like the loosest driving I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, but I went to LA. I was like, this is like a third world country. People <laughs> would just fucking pull it Dude, in front no of shit. Yeah. going like on the 100 f- miles an hour. On the fucking uh, freeways wow. or highways, whatever they are, like on the side of the road, there's just prangs everywhere. Prang, 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 prang. Like prang, yeah. prang, 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 prang. That sounds like prang, prang, prang. I got like a special cool. lane, the carpool lane, where you could go yeah. as fast as you fucking dude, want. Dude, the carpool lane is sick because there was yeah, five of us in good. the car. So we we're always just like, let's go on the carpool lane. Do you know about carpool nah, lane? What's, so what's if you have two or more passengers in your yeah. car, you can go on the carpool lane and, it may, and it's just like constantly flowing while everyone's banked up. Yeah. It's so cool. Like how 20, do they police that? Like, how do you, more. What, what if you have, what if it's just you driving your car? Like what's uh, stopping well, you from going in the car? car. Would, like there's people monitoring it or there's, there's cameras. Like if or cops drive past, I'll yeah, see it. Or I think there's yeah. cameras too. Mm. I think there's mm. cameras. Oh, I'd be tempted to go in the carpool lane. But yeah, like carpool lane sick. Yeah, yeah. best well, invention. Me and Jay, shouts out. Uh, went to the west to the west coast thing of America. Drove up and down. Like we obviously would always just permanently have a carpool. Yeah, we'd always just like be going, driving yeah. twenty miles faster than everyone else. It's too fast, especially we have a van. We have a van. Yeah. It's pretty scary. We had a Kia. On oh, the wrong side of the road? Well, we yeah. kind of have. We, it's similar, though, the way no. we have it here, right? No. Like the fast no, 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 lane? No, it's different. No, it's extra. It's Our fast lane's like you just sit in the right hand lane. Yeah. But theirs is like, it's specifically like it's different color than the rest of the, the, rest of the freeway. Mm. It's like a bus lane almost, right? It's like a separate Yeah, looking, it's a separate lane. It's like a straight line. It says car. I like that. I yeah. like that idea. It's and so then, cool. Yeah. We should try that out here. It was yeah. cool. Um, who, who's who's the man? Who's the man we need to talk to about I that? Don't know. Who's some the, some the, fucking who's that guy? Who's that the guy? Minister for transport. Oh, minister I think it's actually transport. Dean Nolder. No, I think he quit. It's a, he quit. He quit. Who's, who's the premier here? Brandon. Uh, no. Brandon. No, the Coles. No, the premier. <laughs> <laughs> no, the premier here is um. Fuck, it's like right there. It's like right there. Yeah. I don't just know the fucking premier. Like right there. I don't know the premier of WA. Oh, Mark, McGowan. Mark McGowan. Mark McGowan. Shouts out, oh, Mark McGowan. Yes. Shouts out. Tra- whoever the whoever succeeded, um, succeeded. Dean Nolder, the tran- transport minister of Western Australia, or yeah. um, whatever the position is. Who is Let's that guy? Let's do it. Let's get a fucking carpool lane going. I think Australian, uh, Western Australian politicians suck, I reckon. I like they Steve Smith. Don't they all suck? Stephen Smith. I used to live near Stephen Smith and Condoleezza Rice went to his house <laughs> when I was at school and there was like – Secret service vans all up and down the street and helicopters floating above our house. But, so Condoleezza Rice went to Mount Lawley. That's cool. Once. Yeah, I remember she came she came here and um did like a big visit and spoke to some people mm. and when we were in high school. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that shit. That's crazy. What was that for? Like what I don't know, probably Cause she what's her position over in the US? She's like She the, was the Secretary of State for yeah. George Bush. Yeah. So That's we're talking right. like pre oh eight. We're yeah. talking like ages ago. It might have been, yeah, it's 06 07, or 06. 07. Yeah. Ooh. I would have been in primary school then. Yeah. And then it was Hillary Clinton after that when it was the Democrats. Really? About, yeah, I, I think Hillary Clinton was above Secretary as Secretary of State. of State, yeah. Oh, really? And then <laughs> after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. Who she, knows? She, 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 she went down south after that. Yeah. She just started doing yeah. uh, public speaking. Hey, let's not get into politics. To the banks. Let's not get into politics. <laughs> now nah, we'll st- yeah, we'll steer away from that. Politics is my expertise. <laughs> Isn't that why I'm here? You guys said that you wanted to talk about the upcoming oh, yeah, Victorian we, yeah, state election. Yeah, we know election. you did it. You went to uni to do politics or some shit. So I did that's what we want to get year. you here yeah, for. Yeah. I did politics for a year at university yep. in 2013. So I'm an expert in the 2013 Australian federal election. Oh, really? Yeah. Who was that one again? That Fucking, was uh, Abbott vs. Rudd. Al Gore. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Wait, what? Abbott vs. Rudd. Abbott vs. Rudd. What? Really? Abbott 2013? Won. Yeah. Whoa. To own a boat. I still remember. That's what they say. To what? own a boat. Yeah. Tony Abbott. <gasps> no, was it a stop the boats? That was, yeah. He had Which a, was, disgrace, three word, it was disgraceful. A, the three word slogan campaign. Pretty disgusting. Mm. Stop the boats. Mm. Gross. Gross. Shame. That's what they say in politics. Shame. Shame. And here, 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 here. Shame. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It's yeah. very structured. Just say fuck Someone's you. Here, here. Fuck no. And when someone's and when they disagree, like yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. Hey. 
Pauline Hanson's a bit, how you going, isn't she? Pretty weird. That's a way to say it. Yeah. I wouldn't invite her to a dinner party. She'd fucking ruin the vibe. Man, have you? I like I like watching videos of Red Dragon. Do you know Red Dragon? No. <laughs> you know that song is like, am I ever going to see the beef again? It's just Maddie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just Maddie Johns, who is a rugby league legend. His brother, rugby league legend's brother. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he he was he was like doing interviews at the Arias, and Pauline Hanson was at the Arias. No, not Arias, Logies. Logies, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? What's Pauline Hanson doing at the Logies? People keep fa- facilitating her. Yeah, to be like in the public eye, mm-hmm. but like she doesn't really deserve it. No, like I'm I'm sick of her. Some people, yeah, she gets that kind of influence. I feel like Clive Palmer. I like, you know, it's gets, like, gets, uh, am I, I like getting his master the meme or something? I've, I've seen the billboards make Australia great again. And and when like, I see that, I'm like, no, fuck you, man. Like, don't, don't like try and like use this tactic by some already. Yeah, he's you, trumping it, right? Yeah, yeah he's Trump, it. Trump has already been it. We're already sick of Trump. Don't try to take the. the what slogan Cl- again. I don't know what Clive wants. It might happen. Though. I reckon he's probably just doing it for tax reasons or something. He's, he's from like, Footscray. He's in debt. To Clive work. Palmer. Isn't that crazy? Footscray, is that? In du- that's it's, in, it's Western Western Melbourne. Bulldogs. Yeah, right. So that's, <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that before when you were saying how like. Shouts out Bob Murphy. Depending on if you're out or well, out of suburbs, Melbourne, Melbourne, you come into the city, and, like if you're out yeah. in the West, you well, like, come you know, in and I don't Footscray. Know. And Footscray has like a bit of a nightlife, I guess. Like there's a couple of like DIY punk venues there. Yeah. Got a piss. But yeah. Um, Oh, uh, you take your headphones off, mate. <laughs> that's something that's so... It you, happens so much, hey. You'll, you'll understand this, like, obviously having a Perth background, but, the, like, the idea that you you go out in the city depending on which area area you come from, yeah. whether it's west, north, or you east go, or south. You can go, like, Claremont. It doesn't happen here in Perth. It's... Mm-hmm. You just go... I mean, you, you, can go you might be more likely to go... Out to Claremont if you're out in the western, western suburbs, yeah. but there was, there's never really that kind of like, oh, you just wouldn't go there if you were any if you were in the east mm. or if you're in anywhere else. I miss going out in Northbridge, you know. Do you like it? Um, even like, even so you've been the, in Melbourne for a few years. All the but, aggression and shit, like, um, yeah, because I, I sort of miss it a bit now. Like, I miss because uh, when I was like 18. You know, I hadn't even shaved my face before, you know. I was like a boy when I went out and I was scared. And we had so many, like, rich miners here who were just, like, so abusive. But now yeah. now, now I'm, I'm, I'm tall, I'm 75 kilo. 70, well, I'm actually pushing 80 now. But hey. now, now, now I'm 6'2", six, I'm, six I'm 78, <clears throat> 77 and a half kilos. I can fucking take on a miner. Yeah. So you've come back to Perth where it's a bit argy bargy and yeah, you're like, oh fucking, like, oh, you know, let's go. It's like the you know left. I left as a boy, came back as a taller boy, a tall, <laughs> tall boy with a <laughs> bit of how you going about and ready to ready to go. Someone uh, pushed you, right? Yeah, someone pushed me last night. Ish, uh, it, it was like, and, and that it, was so that was. Friday, you've been in Perth. Last night, Friday. I've been in Perth for uh, like a, I'd been in Perth that for day? maybe like five hours. Five yeah. hours and yeah, someone pushed hours, you. Five hours for a push. Fucking Perth. No shit. Hey, yeah, PSA, <laughs> if someone fucks with you, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> no one's actually going to fight you. Every, no, most yeah, exactly. of them are just fucking poses. Yeah, if someone They're runs past you outside Subway. And yeah, it punches yeah. you in the face. Uh, <laughs> chase after them. Yeah, yeah. throw your fucking They're, shoe at them. They're reflecting their yeah. own insecurities. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with We're that. We're docs. They're heavy under throw. Should I tell that it. story again? <laughs> yeah, tell it. Yeah, do it. Let's unpack it. <laughs> I think we told it in the, the, uh, episode 13 or whatever. Uh, some guys just like sprinted out of Subway, three of them, all holding like bags. I was like, oh, have they, have they, did they steal some sandwiches? sandwiches? Dude, man, and don't, I was like, yeah. don't become a damn civil fucking... <laughs> they become a good Samaritan over stolen sandwiches. I'm going to get that tattooed. <laughs> no, but they attacked they attack Yeah, but you. I was like, I didn't even really like come off of that much. I was just like, I saw them running. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> no. That's all I said. And then he just was like, as he ran past, he was like, bang. He like, open fists like this part. It didn't really hurt, but I was like shocked. I was like, wow. What the fuck? Really Not where you, you really want. did it. You really did it. <laughs> you know? And, Mate, I, and then I chased after him and threw my... It's sh- not like they were robbing a bank. <laughs> threw, threw my shirt yeah, or something. Right. He threw an iced tea bottle at me 
and it didn't hurt, obviously, because it's <laughs> an empty iced tea bottle. Bit chess, plastic yeah, bottle. Yeah, if it was an tea, that'd be a different story. <laughs> I threw my shoe at him, did I? Yeah, you threw yeah. your shoe. Yeah, and then the cops, like, grabbed me. <laughs> and they were like, you threw your shoe at them? Yeah. Yeah. What the it, fuck? I think because it fell off and then I was like, I was like, I would just use it. What I, the hell? And the cops questioning us, and I'm sitting there going, well, "Why don't you actually just go and get them?" And no, they asked that. They're like, "Do you want me to go after?" Them? I'm like, "No, you won't find them. <laughs> They're gone." I'm gonna pay you too. Yeah. All right. Holy uh, shit! I, just once, right once, once, me and Will. This is a good story. I hope his parents don't watch this. But yeah, um, once me and Will, we were like public drinking outside of. I think it's called Eve. Is that a place oh, by the casino? No, it's not by the casino. Oh. It's like um, you have to walk upstairs to get into it and it's like two levels and a big sort of open space. It's, it's like what's metro. The, what's but, the suburb? Um, what is it? It's, like, it's in Northbridge. It's near... Oh, shit. Oh, no, well. Two stories. Uh, gold bar? Or no, no, no. Keep going, keep going. Uh, two stories. Trying to think of all the two-story places. Uh, fuck it. Uh, uh, capital? No. Uh, no, it wasn't Capital. Uh, no, nah, it's on. Like, it's like near a park. You know, there's that Macca's near that park. Yeah, <laughs> the Northbridge Macca's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across yeah. Like, it's around yeah. the corner there. It's around the corner from there. Uh ginger. Maybe it's ginger. Ginger. It no, 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 ginger. I know where ginger is. It's, it's not ginger. It's near there. Ah, uh, Will. Where was it? Where was that place that yeah, we I went to? You remember that night that I met Lewis Montague? <laughs> There was the what the the pirate radio station, <laughs> yeah. Like where was the nightclub we went to Villa. after that? Villa, Villa, Villa. Okay, right, but that, we were across the road from Villa, public urinating and drinking. It was the first time I've ever been pulled over by cops who weren't in uniform. They probably were definitely not cops. That's so. right. You remember that they were undercover, showed us a badge, and then midway through, like giving, handing us out a fine for public drinking and urinating that I never got. Yeah, I never got hey, it you know they, yeah. they dragged the dude out of the van and threw him against the van? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? What the they fuck They made us that? chuck all the alcohol, uh, alcohol out. Yeah. Hey, remember, I was like, so can we keep these? And the guy was like, yeah. And then the other guy was like, no. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> I was like, man, are you guys even fucking cops? What the <laughs> fuck? They just like fully just like playing clove and just showed us a badge. They're like, you guys are drinking, you can't drink. And then like midway through like telling us off, we were just like sitting there and then they go up to a dude sitting in his car and like pulled the dude out of the car and threw him against his own car. Remember that? Yeah. What? What? What the fuck happened? We got fucking rolled. That was a weird night. That was um, that that th- wasn't the night that I met Lewis though. That was a different night, I think. Yeah. I've been to Villa twice. Yeah. I don't know what we we're doing. So that pirate radio thing in in fucking Bays, Maylands. It was Maylands. M- yeah, Maylands. Maylands. Some, yeah. yeah. The backyard project. Yeah. I don't know if they're still rocking around, but that's where I met. That's where I met Lewis, and we thought that we hated each other. And now we live together. <laughs> that's actually a good segue. I, I, we might still hate each other. I don't know. <laughs> he was like, "I thought you hated me." I was like, "I thought you hated me." We were just like giving <laughs> each other the dumb, like young bloke look, just like, you know. <laughs> yeah. That was that. That was a weird one because, um, yeah that that was the night that um. Well, I fucking, I'll, I'll go for a piss in the toilet. That wasn't, no, was that the night the Muller kicked someone? No, he didn't kick anyone that night, but I, I went for a piss and he just like breaks into the toilet and like, <laughs> like cock in hand, just like, oh, yeah. the fuck are you doing, Muller? Yeah. And he's like got some chick's like purse and he's like going through it, taking all these $20 oh, notes Muller. out. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, oh shit. Muller. I'm like, <laughs> dude, we're at a party. We don't, there's he like four or five of us. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. There's like four or five of us that know each other, and then we're at a party of like 20 people that w- we don't know. And that was all, more than 20 people. They're scary as fuck. Because I had one guy just sitting there telling me about like this creepy guy who's just like going, like, We have the craziest parties here. We, you know, I mean, mm. last party we had here, I just, I was like, I had some chicks fucking snorting coke off my dick. And I'm like, uh, and then and then Muller's like stealing money from them. I'm no. like, this is how you fucking die. Yeah, Muller, man. Dude, we went, uh, yeah, dude. here we go. <laughs> okay, yeah. I want to hear some Muller stories because I don't know this Which guy one do I tell first? Like, <laughs> I got ones that you don't even know. Oh, Ooh, shit. Yeah, tell us the fucking yeah, one. The one that ones. you don't know? All right, so we were at a friend's, Um, my f- uh, a friend of ours, we were all... S- 
maybe still 17 or 18 and yeah. we had our, one of our friends was dating an older guy who got a job uh, in the mines and so we were having a going away for him which was pretty ridiculous considering he was going to be back in like two weeks but we were at a going away party in Bayswater. That's where it's at. Yeah. Bayswater. And so a bunch of them went to another house party across the road that happened to be um, – a bikey's house and it was a bikey party and it was pretty gnarly apparently i didn't go in i didn't even know what was going on um and so there was a bikey but i remember wimbledon was on so it would have been like this time 2012 and so there was yeah. like a party oh. on mullers from zimbabwe everyone was saying that he was south african so he got pissed off i don't know if he was pissed <laughs> off upset whatever but he decided to piss on their front doorstep <laughs> no kidding. Oh, and so like the son of the bike, he went to school with us at, and um, and they were like, look, we don't want to hurt anyone at the party. We just want the dude's name and, you know, it will all be fine. And we were just like, shit, what the fuck do we do? So all these bikies who were across the road from us who knew us were just like, you know, we don't care. Just tell us who the fuck the dude was. And we were just like, oh, we don't know him. Like, he just rocked up to the party. He wasn't invited. We don't know who he is. I saw Muller drive off drunk. <laughs> he drove <laughs> off drunk in Bayswater all the way back to like fucking, was it Southern River? Yeah. <laughs> drove off. And as he was driving off, he hit every single fucking curb. <laughs> oh, God. Drove off drunk. And I called up my, my friend. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to mention any names. But my friend was like, dude, can you get your mum to pick us up? I was like, all right. So I called my mum. I was like, mum. Muller pissed on a bikey's doorstep. They're really mad. Can you please pick me and my friend up? And my mum was like, what the fuck? And like the mum of the dude's house was like, bike. I was like, blah, 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 bikies. And then she was like, what? And I was like, fuck, like, this is scary. That was a scary. I mean, you had to be there. When I told that story, it wasn't as scary as what it actually was to know that there was bikies across the road that wanted to fucking no, beat I the felt, fuck out of someone. I, I felt it. You feel it? I felt it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Luke Muller. I got Ooh, more stories. Yeah, dog. Let's do it. He drove a yellow Hyundai Gets and he <laughs> fucked it up so bad that he didn't have to put the clutch in to change gear. Oh, really? Yeah, he would just change gear. He didn't need to put the clutch in. It's always baffled me what? how he's he just... changed gear without a clutch. I mean, I don't know much about cars, but, I mean, I've never seen someone change gear without putting the clutch in. So yeah. there was something weird about that car. And we used to listen to Biggie Smalls <laughs> and Beastie Boys in the car. Once on yeah. a Sunday we went to Left Bank you know that place? Yeah. Mm, mm. And uh, I was wearing a sick shirt. It was Christmas time, December, and I was wearing a sick shirt that um, had like a design of Batman dying in toxic fumes or fire on it. Yeah. And this dude offered me 40 bucks for it. He's like, I like your shirt. I want to buy it. I'll give you 40 bucks. And I was like, no. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like 18 and what, like. Four months old, so like eighteen and four months. I was like, no, I'm not giving you my shirt. Yeah, he was like wearing some fucking boring ass shirt. I was like, I'm not swapping shirts. So you're not. And Muller was like, yeah, fucking give it to him. Come forty bucks, we can buy. We can buy four pints. Like, come on. And he like starts <laughs> taking. Four pints. Four pints. <laughs> yeah, he starts taking my shirt off. I'm like, fuck off, dude. <laughs> and then upstairs there was a Christmas party for a workplace. We went up there and we told everyone that we were from the mail room. <laughs> we're like, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no. We're working in the mail room, like we just. And then like these people like, you don't. Fuck Fucking work in the office. You have to get out of here. And we're like, no, 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 no. we work in the mail room. And then like, they got security and threw us out. Like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. And then we drove home from Left Bank to Mount Lawley. And uh, he was drunk as steering. And I was like, oh shit, Muller, like, dude, you're a bit pissed. I should steer. So I steered. <laughs> and he yeah. was in the driver's he, seat. He was driving and I was in the passenger seat and I steered. And we drove from. Yeah, left bank, Frio to Mount Lawley. And I didn't Ooh. I didn't know how to bypass the city. I knew how to get home through the city. So we went into the city and I accidentally turned down two one-way streets the wrong way. And cars, oh, it was like 2 a.m. Cars were like flashing their lights at us and shit. And we were just like drunk guys. And we were like, we know, we know we're driving <laughs> down the wrong side of the fucking road. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. That's that logical thing. Yeah. It's like, we know. You don't have to flush your life. We know we're going down the wrong way. <laughs> That's too good. Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. You I'm fucking breaking dog. breaking the law severely, yeah. but fuck you. <laughs> you That's can't too good. flash your fucking light at me. <laughs> and then, all right, I got another one. I got like, I mean, we could go for an hour. This is, 
in this period of six months of me being 18 in Perth. Yeah. So yeah. me and Muller, we used to go to the casino every Friday. We'd leave my house in Mount Lawley and walk through. Across a, the bridge, across right? Across that massive ass bridge and walk <laughs> through um, the Mel, uh, the Burs, Burwood, Burswood? Burswood Burswood golf yeah. course and treat, pre-drink there. <laughs> once I counted, <laughs> we were walking through there once and he got bit by his he got 17 mosquito bites walking along the Shit. river. He must have some fucking grade A blood because I didn't get bitten once. <laughs> he was like, dude, I'm getting bitten by all these mosquitoes. I was like, I'm not getting bitten once. And then he counted them. And we had 17 mosquito bites before we even got into the casino. Oh, and so we used to pre-drink there. And, <coughs> um, you know, we were best mates and I was leaving for Melbourne like two days later and he was like probably like visibly upset. And we were at the casino, he got himself like written off and we walked out of the casino. The Maccas at the casino had just come in, which was like what we had dreamed of for years. But we were going through the car park <laughs> and he was like so drunk that he was like falling from car to car and he vomited on every single car's window. <laughs> every car. Every car's window. And I was like, dude, I was like, you know, I got that whole aggressive, oh, <laughs> pull your fucking head in, pull your fucking head in, Muller. You know? <laughs> And so we're walking back to my house. <sighs> he, he did cross country at Aquinas, yeah? Yeah. So he was a fucking good runner. He was a fit for a bloke who drank as much as him. Aquinas yeah. are savages when it comes to sport. <laughs> when it comes to fucking uh, cross country, shout out to Jimmy, yeah. uh, Jimmy McIntyre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He was well, a state runner in cross country. But anyway, more like, wasn't as good as Jimmy, but he was still a fucking good runner. Zero meatheads in the corner. Yeah, he <laughs> ran across the damn bridge. <laughs> Muller ran across the bridge and that bridge is so long that yeah, yeah. if someone's on the other side, you can't see them because it fucking follows the curvature of the earth. That's oh, how long yeah, that yeah. fucking bridge is. Right? What, what I mean, is it that could, bridge? Hey? It's, it's like what the – it's the one that goes to Belmont the Grand Farm of – no. Freeway? No. Well, it goes into the frame from. I don't know. No, yeah, everyone, like a, everyone like a everyone tunnel on the side of it, or the bottom. So there's like, like a the tunnel on the side right of it. Right next to the Ascot race course. No, it's not Ascot. It's Belmont, isn't it? Is yeah, it? It's Belmont it's race like, course. It's almost like a tunnel on Belmont. the side of the bridge. It's like this, like, you see all the way down the end. It's like. It's a pedestrian, pedestrian yeah, tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's that's like under the road. It goes across. Yeah, yeah. It goes across near the old power station. Yeah. So he. Yeah, I walk that one all the time for the way home from the city. Yeah, so he yeah. he, he okay. ran across that bridge and I lost him. I was like, I ran for like a quarter of the bridge and I fucking ran out of energy and he kept running. I was like, it's Mula, huge. Mula, just like Castaway with Wilson. Mula, <laughs> stop fucking running. Mula. <laughs> and I get down, I'm like, where the hell is this guy? We're down near the power station there. And I look down on like, was it is it a pylon? What is it called when it comes down from the bridge? Uh, what the exit or like, no, 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 the big thing that sticks out of the ground and holds the bridge up? Oh, probably pylon. Pylon, yeah, yeah probably. Let's, let's so he'd that. like climbed onto a, a the base of a pylon, yeah. like on the edge of the river, and he was just lying on his back. And I was like, "Mate, you're such a fucking dickhead! What the fuck are you fucking doing? What the fuck are you fucking running for?" And I checked my phone. I don't think I had an iPhone then. And I checked my phone and looked over, and the dickhead was gone. He was gone. He was gone. And I was like yelling out in this park. I was like, Mula, Mula. Oh. And so <laughs> I had to go home. I went home and then maybe like half an hour later, I hear this like dickhead try and get through my door. And I was like, what the fuck? And it was a Mula and he's soaking wet. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, oh, I tried to jump across a fucking stream. And I was like, what some the Some big cousin f-? shit. Yeah, he did some tried big cousin shit. Yeah, yeah. Every night. Every <laughs> night yeah. out. And Mula, he tried to jump across this stream, ended up like in the drink, fucking st- soaked as, and he got his That's keys so out to good. drive home. And we wrestled on my front lawn. I was like, you're not fucking driving home. We wrestled. And then he was like, I'm fucking driving home. And... I was like, dude, don't drive home. Because he, he lived in Southern River. So that was like an hour drive or some shit. I don't know how long it was. It was a big drive. And I was like, don't do that drunk. We wrestled on my front lawn. He won. He was much more physically able than me <laughs> as a fucking cross-country runner covered in South water. South African. Yeah, Zimbabwean. Don't, yeah, Zimbabwean. Yeah. And so and he Shouts drove off Zimbabwe. and I cried. I was like, fuck, I don't hope my mate doesn't die. And that was, that's actually the last time I saw him. Holy shit. What? He's still alive. Oh, I didn't know the story. That's actually the, like that. that's the last time I saw him. Ever. Now, now he's selling gold in Zimbabwe. <laughs> actually, no, it's not the last time I saw him. I'm peeing break. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's the end. Never saw him again. Man. 
<laughs> oh, oh, you, we've never talked for so long about one person. Do you have do you have any events like that where you're <clears> like, that was a pretty fucking sad night? I I have a specific yeah. one too. I've got a lot of events that relate to that included oh, to, Muller. To Muller. <laughs> yeah, what what did you have? I think, I think the most I think the most ridiculous was what I, I I was like I had a hay fa- I had hay fever yeah <laughs> so I was like, taking antihistamines and so we went to the curtain tab which is a horrible place to be yeah, don't ever go there at about eight pints and it turns out that's not a good combination no so I lost my fucking mind we like got to the oval like that's before the highway you know like the oval that like, curtain. Like yeah, play hockey or footy or soccer or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. and ever know I just like sprint as fast as I can straight to like Ken Street there. And then I start jumping fences in Bentley. You know where you used to live? You used yeah, to live? Yeah, yeah, in um, yeah. Karawara, there. Karawara, yeah, all the houses. To... I was like, I found myself in people's backyards and shit. Why? Just what 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 was it about know. alcohol and antihistamine? Anti- I think there's some sort of histamine. chemical reaction between alcohol and hist- antihistamines. Do they have PSA: like, Don't don't yeah. ha- take any hay fever allergy and drink at the same time. Nah, because I was like lost. I lost my mind. I didn't know where the fuck mm-hmm. I was. I was like jumping people's houses you were like, in, Be- in Bentley. <laughs> and I called up Rainy. I was like, because they like because I sprinted away from them. I just bolted. And at some point, I, I texted Jay. I was like, I think I'm a zombie. <laughs> uh, I think the the cops are after me, and I think I'm a sociopath. Mm. <laughs> wow, so that's like some real yeah. manic shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't know where. Yeah, don't hit the antihistamines and drink. No. Yeah, just jump a fence. <laughs> fences in Bentley. No, uh, that's far. And I called radio. I was like, I think I can't, I, I can't come back to you guys. I think I think I did. I that, think I, I think I'm on meth. I'm done. <laughs> but I wasn't. I'm but done. I just told him. I was like, Hey, I think I'm doing meth. D- did but you, I wasn't. When you started sprinting, I was like, why did I say that? Did you like? Were there two parts of you? There was like the part that was like chemically t- I just been taking wa- you away. I just been watching The Walking Dead a lot. Yeah, but did you want to do all the shit that you were doing, or were you like, "What am I doing?" Like half, like was it I, like you were kind of like only, a spectator? I only, I only remember this retrospectively. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, because obviously on the night I it's have. all it's you know. No, I just got terrified. I just got paranoid. I just sprinted away. Nice. I thought people were after me. Yeah, I was sprint. I just Damn. I like full on sprinted. It, it reminds me of yeah. Luke Muller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why. <laughs> uh, I got another story for you. I got I got plenty yeah. of stories. Hit us with the story. On. So, uh, he studies biomedicine. So not only is he physically elite, but he's mentally elite as well. Dude, that happens a lot. Like people who are like absolute loose heads. Yeah, they just like just like they also as like fuck. they <laughs> do like jobs that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, like occupational remember, hazard had, safety officer or some shit. He had the best. Yeah. He had the best hand because he was a, a he <laughs> cleaned. This was his job. He cleaned swimming pools at a swimming pool showroom. Like you know how like it, like so there's like a oh store God. with all these swimming pools in the backyard. He cleaned the pools. That was his job. And so all day he was just in the sun yeah. cleaning pools. And he had the best hand, beautiful Zimbabwean skin or well, Dutch heritage, I guess. And we used to bond because my last name is Prussian. His last name's like German or Dutch. And so we were like, yeah, we're fucking dude, we're fucking cousins. Oh, yeah, <laughs> European. Yeah. yeah. And but um, uh, he used to brag that he was. One of he used, to, he used to brag that he was one percent of the population that could jump over their own head. <coughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> you do, what do you mean? Uh, he could jump over his own head, <laughs> and only only one percent of the population can do that. <coughs> and so one night we were at um, I don't know if I should I don't know if I should be mentioning people's oh, names no, if I, they I, want I, to be. I, sorry, I don't mean to blo- stop your story for a bit. <laughs> I still want like some clarification. As in, like he can jump high. Jump, jump. The height of your head, or like he can jump, yeah, he can jump like, the height of his own head. Like, yeah, not do a front flip over his own head somehow, or like, like he could just, yeah, yeah, he could, yeah. <laughs> he could dislocate his head so he could jump over it. Nah, <laughs> he, he, like, are legit. We, are we bringing other people into the story, or oh yeah, there's nothing incriminating. Oh, <laughs> but go I was at it. a um, go for it. Yeah, I was at a um a good old uh, house party full of Aquinas people. I was a token public school kid there, and. uh Two of them going missing and rocked up like we were like where the fuck are they trying to call them? Uh, I think we were we were still seventeen then, so we were drinking illegally. Yeah, and uh, two of us 
disappeared and we're like, where the fuck are they? And then he just rocked up with a street sign and we're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so then all of us just went on this massive rampage and tried to steal street signs. Of we, stole, we, stole, <laughs> we stole heaps. We stole heaps. And oh. Moy disappeared. And then uh, he rocks up in the hallway. Well, like, he rocks up at the house party and he's like red, covered in sweat, panting. I'm like, dude, what the fuck happened? He's like, look in the hallway. <laughs> That's my best mullet. I can only do mullet <laughs> sometimes. But he's like, look in the hallway. And I was like, all right. I looked in the hallway. Not only had the cunt stolen the street sign, he stole four street signs attached to a pole <laughs> and the Jesus concrete Christ. that the pole was yeah, set a, in. there's no a concrete yeah. pole he on the bottom. Stole, he fucking took the whole thing out of the ground <laughs> and took it back to the damn house and it was in the hallway of the house. What the fuck? Muller. Four of them. Four, there was four signs on one pole and he ripped the whole pole out of the ground and put I've it in the I've never managed to do one. I've tried to do that. Yeah. Like a gardener street, try and pull it so out. Then, so I like, can't remember what the road it. is, but I drove down it to go to Freo yesterday. It's a big one. And... Uh, it's um and there was like it's gone now. I, I looked yesterday to see if the sign was there. <laughs> so it was like two. It was like the two pole sign with the big, you know like the big highway ones, but it had yeah. like a bunch of things on it. Oh, and shit. so there was four of us. We set out to get this sign out of the ground. And there was these guys at the bus stop. It was like one a.m. They're going, yeah, can't pull that thing down. It's like on a four lane road, and we're just like, <laughs> and I'm just there, and we're all shaking. And then all of a sudden. I, I've got my, uh, like, you know, back to here signs there. And boom, horizontal Luke Muller. Horizontal Luke Muller. He did the flying kick thing, you know, the. Oh, the this, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that over my shoulder and hit the sign. <laughs> trying to get it. I mean, it did nothing to get the sign out of the ground. But I was like, and he just, he like, he fully like, this is the, where's the sign? <laughs> this is the sign. Yeah. Like, there's my shoulder. And he just went. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and then it drops like this, straight down to the ground. He's a determined cunt in anything uh, he does. I, I think that's it, it. I don't know if it's determination. <laughs> I don't it's know. stupidity. Yeah. Sorry, right? It's like one day, Muller, you're going to be a doctor and uh, you can't be going around flying, fly kicking signs, you know. Yeah, you got to pack it in. Yeah, there's a whole scientific process. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next Muller story. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Still around, I think. We were at the oh, Dean my. on Aberdeen Street, which yeah. at the time Creative. just introduced a no mullet or rat's tail policy, which was risky. Ooh, just I'd, like Eve, I'd, no I'd, cabo. Yeah, I just uh, I just shaved off my mullet at the time, and uh, we were there. We were upstairs in the dance room up there. I mean, you know, it was packed to the rafters, full of normies and people who had just oh. freshly cut their rat's tails and mullets off. <laughs> yes. Normies. It's like, why would you make it a no mullet or rat's tail fucking policy when everyone who goes there has a mullet and rat's tail, you know? Yeah, the only yeah. people who want to go there have mullets and rat's tails. But we were there. We're on the upstairs dance floor <laughs> and a fight breaks out between two dudes, like like just two dudes, like two dudes fighting. Proper fight though. Good one. Good Perth shit. You know, yeah. what you'd seen on a night out in it's Perth. real passion. Yeah, real passion about someone probably accidentally touching someone else's hand on the dance floor. <laughs> so these guys are down. Everyone's trying to break him up. And no kidding, Luke Muller decides to just swing a kick into someone's ribs. And that's it. That's all he did. He kicked someone in the ribs when they were fighting. And he just turns around and goes, I just kicked, it. I just kicked that cunt in the fucking ribs. So I was why? like, I Yeah, I was like, what the fuck, Muller? What are you doing kicking people? You're going to get us bashed. But you want another one? <laughs> oh yeah! Fuck, you're back to back, mate. I Just got like Drake. This is every single week. This, this is probably all one weekend. I reckon these stories are. So, but what, uh, before you tell the story, what do you think the inspiration is for his? For his motivations, this kind of person that's just like fucking loose. I don't know. I think like, I, I guess just do the most extreme thing. I don't know. I think he was extradited. Is that extradited? I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah. He, you know, I don't know. Like you know, Zimbabweans. They were kicked out of Zimbabwe. White Zimbabweans. So he was kicked out of Zimbabwe, his family probably. And so I think he was just, you know, scrambling for identity. Yeah. <laughs> and not finding it and getting very frustrated with himself, which I think is pretty common. It's a common tale. That's yeah. A common I mean, tale it's for pretty, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like my parents yeah. are from New Zealand. It's something I had no cultural identity. I was like, I'm not Australian. I'm not, I like, I'm not Australian because I'm not from here. I'm not a Kiwi because I don't live there. You know? Yeah. So I think that's yeah. how Muller felt. As well, you know, it's like the Zimbabwean community is even smaller than anything. And he, you know, d- gone to school there and all of a sudden he's rocked up in Australia. So, but this story starts at the Scotto. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> on, on a Wednesday night. This none of this shit would have happened if fucking Will didn't. Just go, oh, what a Wednesday yeah, night. If, if none of this shit would have happened if Will didn't fucking push a jug down our throats. Mm. Mm. How much were they? What like ten fucking, bucks? Oh, ten, 10 bucks. bucks jugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the start of a yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jokes. Could have been VB, could have been Foster's, could have been Khan Draft. We don't know. Yeah. Probably yeah, VB. 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 Khan Draft wasn't that popular. because no, yeah. it tastes like so glass. Me and Muller decided to go to Cheek at Red Sea. Um, Wednesday? Is, oh, yeah, yeah Cheek Wednesday. It's a big Cheek. I mean, it's a big trek from Scotto to Cheek, really. Yeah. If you're 19 yeah. years old, it's worth 18. it. 18. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think. And so we were going there. Sean tagged along and we were in line they always made the line really big because it was free entry before 12 so they'd yeah. queue up everyone and then as soon as it got 12 they'd start making people pay it was like five bucks but that's yeah. like a hundred bucks to an 18 year old yeah and yeah. so we're in line muller's wasted as and he's like i need a fucking piece and i was like <laughs> mate look we'll be inside soon i know it's oh, hard shit. and <laughs> yeah yeah i know where this is do you need a piece no <laughs> yeah. I you want you just, to be here for this story. Uh, yeah. Nah. So uh, just audience, yeah, we all have bladder problems. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of beer today. Like, just, there's, there's a lot of beers going. We're just pissing. I don't know. It's like oh. This is unprecedented in the podcast history yeah. that we've even left the camera because we're so paranoid. Yeah. God. Check the audio. Testing, testing. Boom, 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 boom. You're listening to Kids Lane's trapped podcast. in a struggle and nowhere to head and on. Yeah, that's that Joel Turner. This is where we need yeah. to sound. <laughs> oh, that's cold, Will. That's cold. Did you feel that wind? I felt yeah. that. I guess we'll take this opportunity to say that this episode is sponsored by Tables. tables. Put your hands on them. Real comfortable. You can do a graph tables. on a table, do some data, digits, <laughs> tables, graphs. This episode is brought to you by Victoria Bitter. Everything I do is brought to me by Victoria Bitter. <laughs> but, yeah, I find myself with no Victoria Bitter being brought to me. Do you fuck, do you fuck with Melbourne Bitter? Yeah, but it's a bit expensive and it's a quite a, it's a bit of a taste. It's got a taste. Whereas VB is like, this is like, this is, this is beer taste, you know. It's like, it's like saying something's brown, like... Beer. This is beer taste. Yeah, this eventually doesn't really taste like anything. Mm. <laughs> Just quietly, I think Brandon's going to be watching right now, thinking like fucking Brandon? classic Will pissing every five minutes. <laughs> it's very out, true. Shouts out, Brandon. Well, well I got Canada. <laughs> yeah. So um, I hope, I hope Muller oh, watches this because yeah. he's going to be sitting there. He just will. thinking. He Fuck. messaged me when I went out for the pee break. I'd seen he'd messaged me. He's in Kunana right now. So we. Oh, fucking actually, really? <laughs> Kunana. He's in Kunana. That's not far. I hope he's not on meth anymore. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, mean, no, I, mean, I, I hope he's not on meth now. <laughs> I, that's what I meant to say. I was like, I hope he hasn't picked up a meth habit or something. But uh, uh, I thought you were like breaking some like drama. That would explain yeah. a lot. No, uh, yeah, it, it <laughs> that's all I'm looking for is an answer. But uh, oh boy. So we got to cheek. We're in line. He needs to piss. He's like, I need a piss. And we're there with Sean. And I was like, they're just, we'll wait. Like, you know, we'll get in soon. Don't worry. We'll get in. And then next thing I know, I like look over and I see the dickhead has his dick out and he's pissing in the line for a nightclub and he's splashing it all over everyone's oh, the ankles. the ice cream shot. He's pissing on that ice cream shot. <laughs> That's right yeah. next to the line. Like you line up for cheek and there's an ice cream shot. He's pissing straight on the pavement in line. Like there's like a hundred people in line and he's got his dick out and he's pissing. <laughs> so I grabbed his dick. <gasps> What was that noise? <laughs> oh, no. That was the government. Don't I, worry about it. I grabbed his dick and put it back in his pants. And I was like, mid piss, right? Fu- <laughs> what? Like, While he's as pissing. he's pissing, you're yeah. just like grabbing like, it. What the fuck are you doing, mate? Put it back <laughs> in his that's, pants. That's a flow state shit. He's like, like sorry. He's like, sorry, it. sorry. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Dude, all wrong. I want to go do is go to cheek. And so, and then, and then I'm like, you know, we're sitting there and he's like, oh, no. So bad. I was like, dude, like we can't lose our spot in line. We'll get fucked over. We won't get in for hours if we lose our spot in line. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I look over again and he's fucking pissing again. And then this girl turns around, right? So this girl turns around and she looks dead on it, Sean. <laughs> and she's like, are you fucking pissing in the line? And I was like, 
He is. <laughs> <laughs> and these two dudes, look at Sean. They're like, that's fucked up, mate. And Sean's just like, I'm not pissing in the line. I'm like, yeah. Oh. I was like, I just grabbed him all and I was like, come on, let's get you down a fucking laneway and let you piss. So that was the end of that. Sean, see you later. Luke Muller, oh my God. it's time to walk home. <laughs> so we... Yeah, you can't piss outside, man. No. So Designated we go, spaces we're indoors. Walking, we're walking from Subiaco to Mount Lawley. And it was one of those walk, things. Man. Have you seen The That's Warriors? That's a fair fucking walk. Have you the seen Warriors. The Warriors, the movie? How like there's like the, oh, yeah, everyone yeah. thinks that, that that gang shot the, the, the leader guy and then the whole way home they have to like deal with all the other gangs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, baseball yeah. Bats That's shit. what it was like. We walked from Subiaco to Mount Lily with every single person in Perth who wanted to fight <laughs> bumping into us. So like we were walking through the city and this like Irish skinhead miner dude has a go at us for crossing the road. Like we ran across the road because we were drunk and he's like, oh, you guys are going to get fucking killed walking across the road that way. And then, like, obviously trying to fight us or some shit, like, you know, I don't know. What yeah. the fuck is that noise? I don't know. That's freaking me the fuck out. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> he's all perfect burst. But then... Yeah, they're really, like... like. No kidding. He's like... I want, they sound quite good. Yeah, cheers. He's like, I want weed. <laughs> he's like, I want weed. I want weed. I want weed. I'm like, dude, I can't help you. I don't know where the fuck to get weed from. Yeah. What is that noise? That's it's just the me door. Up. It's, it's, is it it's, the door? It's, you know. sure it's not like some zombie trying to break oh, in? Oh, there's some crazy ass wind going oh, on. Oh, yeah. This is it built on a, on a some sort of burial. Babe, that's a zombie. <laughs> that's a zombie <laughs> trying to get in. No, I'm checking that out. I'm checking that out. <laughs> what? What if this just cuts off? This is some real. This is some dead. Blair Witch Project shit, man. Fucking. I fucking love that shit. Blair Witch? Blair Witch yeah. I've never seen it. But. It's oh. terrifying. Will, are you okay? What's making the noise? It's a little noise. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like someone hits shit. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> You're scaring me, Will. Oh, shit. No, nah, uh, someone's drilling, eh? Someone's, uh, someone's oh, drilling. drilling next door. Yeah. Rude. Wait, on a really? Saturday. Just on a Saturday, on a windy Saturday, they just decided that they were going to drill. That's a good yeah. hobby, man. So he, he's like, yeah, I want some weed. I'm like, dude, I can't help you. So we're in... Highgate now, I think. We would have been in Highgate. And he decides that he wants weed. So he thinks the best way to get weed is to break into a random's house. Like a straight, like a, just a house. Straight up. He straight picked up. a house, jumped the fence, tried to break into the window. I'm standing on the footpath like, mother, mother, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Mother, what the fuck? And he's like trying to open this cunt's fucking window, like this house's window, trying to break into this house, thinking that he's going to get weed in there. And I'm like, dude, get the fuck back out here right now. Because I'm not going to jump the fence to get Muller back out, you know, because that's that's impractical, really. What do you think the statistical <laughs> chance is that there'd be weed in, <laughs> in the house? house. Yeah. yeah. When the person so has like... Two out of a hundred or something? I mean, it was a really nice house too. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dude, just get the two out of a hundred. I mean, I could imagine say that. two out of two hundred. Yeah. I say what, two out of a hundred. Oh. I don't know yeah. if that's real, but like I can imagine that state of mind. Maybe. Like I could see where that fucking insane and so pattern of thought would come from, he, but it's still I'm fucked. Like, I spent like yeah. 20 minutes trying to talk him out of breaking into someone's house and he jumps the fence back over onto the footpath and this this woman's like, what the fuck are you doing? I know who lives here. You don't live here. And then Muller's all just like, ooh, fucking, fucking. And I was like, man, I'm putting this cunt in the headlock and keep dragging him away. So I had to fucking do that. That was like a terrible experience. That's like, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, there's nothing worse than standing on a footpath trying to convince your mate not to break into a house. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> fuck. Anyway, uh, what have we got next? Um... In terms of the Willow story. Yeah, I got, I, got, I got another one. I had another one. I've got one. This could be a segment. Yeah. I've got an Adidas one. This could be a segment. A, a weekly Adidas segment. Yeah. This, this, is my, this is probably my greatest Muller story. Was I there? Straight to it. Nah, nah. Was it after I left? I don't even know if I've told you about this. No. But it's a... Oh, it's fucking hilarious. But I'm in enjoying hind, only in hindsight is it hilarious. I'm oh. enjoying this as a complete stranger to this, to this <laughs> character. <laughs> Hopefully you meet him one day and you're like, oh, Here this is, is him. Here is Luke Muller. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring him in right <laughs> now. <laughs> Wait, so he, he's in Quinana. So he's in Quinana. I'm going to message is him. He gonna, is he going to come down to the, to to the, the gig tonight? Gig? Yeah. 
That'd be fucking great. That'd be like the Wait, cherry on top. If we've just talked shit about him all night, and then we're like, it's not talking shit. Yeah, it's not talking shit. Yeah. It's not talking shit. But it's, this is a fancy word that I heard. You know him very well. <laughs> Endearing. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this one, you know, you know what um, I just like. I just, you know, what I like about endearing is when you talk shit on someone, and then you're like, it's endearing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, 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 just yeah. fucking bad shit. Yeah, yeah. Done. It's like, like, I'm yeah. your mate, so it's endearing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this cunt has a fucking meth problem, but it's endearing. It's wouldn't, endearing. Wouldn't, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have him fucking. any other way. I had to Google it because there was like a photo of me uploaded where I fell asleep with a beer in my hand, and that's like a thing that I do. I do it heaps. My dad did it too. It's like genetic that I fall asleep with a beer in my hand. Oh shit, epigenetics. And, and then like my friend, yeah. my friend uploaded like a fucking photo of it and all these people commented like who had seen me pass out with a beer in my hand and they're like it's endearing <laughs> and i was like what the endearing, I was yeah. like, what's endearing google google tell me what's endearing but yeah as you're going <laughs> oh yeah so we're in adderdale which is south of the river perth suburb yeah approximately where and um what's well, it surrounded by house? Like suburbs we're at a house Name party mason <laughs> nah, nah i can't remember i can't remember whose house party it was but we me, Muller, and my mate Steve bailed on this fucking house party. We're absolutely wrecked. And we went to Santa Maria Shut up. High School. Oh, to the dorms. Yeah. We, no. That no. <laughs> oh. no. 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 <clears throat> okay, someone else. Yeah, we jumped across there, got up to a bit of mischief, and then fucking, um, I don't know why I thought this was a smart idea, but you know those like shade sales that you get like at like playgrounds? Yeah. yeah. They had them in Santa Maria, like in between like the buildings. And they had them like over like two like two levels. So we walked up the stairs of the buildings onto the second level, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you can jump on these shade sails. They're really like sturdy and like Mula. they're fine. Like you can jump on them. No worries. We're all fucked." So we jumped off the over the balcony onto the shade sails, and we're just like bouncing on them like trampolines. And I'm like, "Yeah, it's cool. Every, like I've done this before. I've never done it before." <laughs> But I'm like, yeah, we were all good. We're all good. Bro, fuck. And we're jumping around. We're having a fucking sick time. Me and Steve are like sharing a, a shade sail, jumping up and down. And Muller's on like his own one, just like bouncing <laughs> sure, up and down. It'd have to be. And then out of nowhere, he fucking just like jumps down, just rips through it, straight through to the next one, <laughs> rips through that. And then like falls, like spins and like hits the concrete. And like, <laughs> like it dead, like still, he's yeah. just like no noise, no <laughs> screaming, just like still, and we're like, so he's, oh, he's shit. fucking shit. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we Dude. run down downstairs to get him, uh-huh. and we're like, Mula, Mula, you're right. And he's like, fuck, no, no, and like, we like uh. grab him, and, he, and as we move him, he's like, ah. Oh. So we think maybe he's like <laughs> broken, his, like had like broken his back. He's like a spinal injury. So oh, we're like, no. oh shit. Um, this is so fucked up. Like he's, obviously, he's fine in hindsight, but it was fucked up at the time. Yeah, we grab, we grabbed him and picked him up and walk him to like Steve's car, chuck him in the back seat. He's like laying across the back seat. Steve and I drive from Adderdale. I've never heard this story, man. Yeah, Adderdale to Mount Lawley. Oh shit! Big drive. There's a lot of big drives uh, surrounded around Muller. We. <laughs> Um, we felt yes, we couldn't get him one. out of the car. <laughs> just want another story. <laughs> we couldn't get him out of the car. He just wouldn't do it. So I went in the house like here and um, grabbed like all these covers and pillows and just chucked him in the back seat. He'd passed out, by the way, getting into the car. So he had no, he didn't oh, remember the drive. Shit. So me and Steve sleep soundly inside the house. Muller wakes up. I can't imagine what it would be like for him. He's just like passed out one minute at Adderdale after a serious accident and then the next thing he knows he's waking up in mount lawley <laughs> parked in a car outside a cafe which is which is net like outside the house over there yeah fuck that he just wakes <laughs> yeah. up with like covers and shit around him like oh, that good. would be the wildest <gasps> trippiest shit oh, he's calling you right now oh shit yeah <laughs> get it oh, get him yeah, on, put it on. <laughs> last speaker last speaker luke luke muller <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'll call him back. This is great. Poor oh, last is, speaker, though. You, I was like, when I did that, I was like, fuck, he's off it. But I just fucking yeah. mocked him straight out. You can't write this shit, man. Put it on a loudspeaker. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I just muted it. Wait, how do you do it? I don't know how to use fucking... Mola! Wait. Oh, how do you... You, you cannot write this. What? Mola. <laughs> Wait, hello? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, real good. What are you up to? 
Yeah, sick. I'm just with Will. We're talking about you right now. <laughs> it's so crazy that you called. Is it on speaker? Yeah, I don't know. How do, how do I get this thing on speaker? Do you know? Um, there you go. Yeah. Mola. Yo. How you yeah, yeah, real good. Oh, shit. I'll turn it up. Are you coming out tonight? Yeah, the thing is, man, I don't know what time I'll be finished. Um, we, we just um, fucking have to change a transformer for um for the port, like just put on a port. Like, like I'm, I'm sure we'll be done before 12, but yeah, if it's too late, we, we might just have to catch up tomorrow. No, mate, come out afterwards. There's nothing better than a knockoff beer. Oh, yeah, you're going to have a late one? Yeah, for sure, dude. When in Perth, sure. you know? <laughs> Don't don't Sounds fucking good. dude don't push it out. You gotta drive me around. We got you remember the time that I steered us around from left bank? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I'll steer I'll steer us and you can do the pedals, just like the olden days. <laughs> I still haven't got my license, dude. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. Oh, but but you've been living in Melbourne, so fair enough. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, well I'll see you tonight then. Oh man. Do you remember this? Um, um, how long are you in Perth for? When do you leave? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Fuck, man. All right. I'll, I'll try my best. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't I'll, care. We're doing it all nighter. What are you I'll doing tomorrow? You. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely meet you before you go, man. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, for sure. Let's, what do you want to do? You want to go to the casino? <laughs> 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 I think that casino's got fucking five grand of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so good. Yeah. Fucking crook cunts. Yeah, but I'm, I'll, 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 I'll give you a call when I knock off. Yeah, for sure, dude. Nah, mate, just count. I don't care where the fuck you are. I'll get an Uber. I don't give a fuck. I'm getting fucking wasted with you. All right. No stress, mate. No stress. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ring later. I'll have to shoot. Yeah, for sure, dude. See you later. All right. Just shout out. Cheers. Catch you. <laughs> what a legend awesome. Absolute legend How I feel like I'll be seeing him at some point Yeah no shit Oh dude it. Oh I'd love to see him I reckon I'd probably even cry I don't know He was my best mate before I left and Yeah Damn Oh that's fucking great You can't write that No you, you can't. can't Oh like, like literally like When I've been going to piss I've been like messaging him like You gotta fucking come out can't yeah. yeah No he's gotta come out it's, oh. I'm hyped I'm hyped to see him After oh, all that just I mean, talk about it. I mean, it's probably <laughs> square now. <I> mean, <laughs> Classic snap. Could change the transformer with my dad. Yeah, I'm just doing some work. And, <laughs> oh, I might see you out, but like the old mula I know would be like, fuck this, let's go out now. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'm fucking keen now to go out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going to, yeah. I hope he watches this. Be hilarious. Yeah, no shit. I'm just spamming with it every single day. That's but, so um, good. You said something about... Uh, Oh, it reminded me of a Muller story. Oh, the long drive. That's it. Yeah. So when I was still 17, the, I learned the hard way about still drinking. Still 17. Yeah. <laughs> I learned the hard way about uh, drinking on an empty stomach. And so <laughs> Muller, classic Muller, who was 18 at the time, bought a case of Miller Chill, which is like the worst beer in the world. I haven't even heard of it. Miller Chill? Yeah. It's like, it's like Miller's with fucking lime flavoring in it Ooh. but we got hell pissed on that we went to a 19th in oh wow i just got hell loud maybe i wasn't oh i haven't been on the whole time oh this, <laughs> you get Wait, it? really yeah oh when this thing's down there's no <laughs> fucking there we go oh my god i can hear myself now <laughs> <laughs> was that thing that down the whole time yeah, it, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, this is cool though i like this Ooh. But yeah, it turns <laughs> off. It turns off. When you, oh my god! Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. No, you'd be good all the, the whole time. Though. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. So mm, we were drinking in Guildford for a nineteenth, and um, someone dropped a bag of lollies on the ground, and they kept getting stuck in my shoes. So I was like brushing them off, and then later in the night, I was a bit pissed, and I felt something. It felt like a lolly in my shoe, so I brushed it off, but it was actually a piece of broken glass and I cut my finger I still got the scar it sounds like a weird dream <laughs> <laughs> here it is I'll show the scar there you go 
We'll, we'll put a picture of that at the show notes. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, so I cried. <laughs> I cut oh, my man. finger up and I cried and I cried and my friend's older brother like hugged me and shit while I was crying. I was just fucking 17 and drunk, but I made up some excuse about why I was crying. Hey. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. really sad because blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, you know, calm down. And then like all these like older girls were like looking up. They're like, this poor boy, he's drunk and he's crying on the sofa. And they were looking after me. And I was like, this, this is nice. I'm being comforted for once. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I passed out on the sofa. I wake up. It's 4 a.m. Luke Muller picks me up off the sofa like – I've never seen such raw strength. <laughs> he picks me up off the sofa, puts me in his car. He didn't know how to get to my house. To get to my house from Guildford, it was you drive down the street, you turn left onto Guildford Road, you drive down Guildford Road, turn left onto Stanley Street and then left onto Pakenham Street. That's how you get to my yeah. house. So that's yeah. three left turns, 20-minute drive. <laughs> yeah. Where the fuck did you live? <laughs> hey? Where the fuck did you live? Mount Lolly. Oh, right, 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 from Guildford to there. I guess. Yeah, it's, oh, three yeah. Left, yeah. it's three left turns. Yeah. You turn on to, left on a Guildford Road, left on a Stanley Street, and left on a Pakenham Street. True. You're there. Yeah. So okay. I wake up. I've been passed out. And I wake up and I'm in this passenger seat, and we're in Belmont. <laughs> Shouts out Belmont six four four. What have you done? Till I die. Till I die. <laughs> what have you done? And he's gone. Can't, can't. How do we get to your house? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it fell like. yeah. And um, he's like, I've been fucking driving around for two hours. I don't know how to get to your fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wake up, cunt your fat. <laughs> That's what it was like. I was like, man, where are we? He's like, I don't fucking know. I was like, there's the vet where we put my dog down. We're ages away from my house. I don't know how to get home. Yeah, he just drops me off at my house, I guess, later. But Dude, you'll probably rather call it from my house. Yeah, probably. So if, you heard, like, if it was like 3 a.m. and you hear someone go, how the fuck do we get to your fucking house? <laughs> it was, it was like back uh, in yeah. 2011. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I always wondered what that was about. I think you nailed it. Yeah. I think you rather call it from the cow yeah, yeah. I remember we kept in contact when I first moved to Melbourne. We kept in contact for a bit and I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, I lost my license. And then, like a year later, he told me that he actually wrapped his car around a tree, the Gets, <laughs> and rode it off. Yeah. And he was like, Yeah, I was too ashamed to tell you. I was like, Mate, well, don't die. <laughs> but now, now he's selling gold in Zimbabwe. He's alive. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard his voice since I came back to Perth. And one Wednesday, we went to a backpackers that had cheap beer with yeah. Ricardo, you know, Ricardo oh, yeah, and yeah. Nicholas Brook. Yeah. And we went there and we got hell written off. <sighs> Fuck. Hey, hey, this is a question I thought of before. You said you you started crying. When? Oh yeah, when I yeah, cut my yeah. finger. Yeah. When's the last time you've cried? This is the set. This is your segment of the show. Yeah. When's the last time you cried, boys? I don't. I actually don't remember. Yeah. I, mean, I know. I don't. The last yeah, time I savage. remember crying. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was. Keep your shit together. Oh. I was at Yaya's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was at Yaya's in Melbourne and I saw on my Facebook that Malcolm Young from ACDC had died and I cried. Oh, yeah. I cried then oh, and Amy, yeah. Amy was like, are you upset? I was like, he's a massive inspiration to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. And so I cried. I cried then. That was November yeah. last year. Yeah. I love a good but cry. I've definitely cried since then. I mean, oh, fuck, man. You know, I love a good cry. I never cried until Toy Story 3 came out. Now I cry every single movie. I cried during, you know, Class of 92, the Manchester United documentary. I cried during that. I cried. Damn. Dude, I watched Braveheart. The last time I cried, I'll, I'll answer my question because I, yeah. <laughs> well, I asked the question. So obviously I have an answer for it. Yeah, yeah I'm to, sure there's a good story here. That I would have preempted. Uh, two weeks ago, I watched a little peep compilation, like music yeah. video of him, yeah. like, like singing, and like pictures of pictures of, pictures of him as a kid flashed up. He died at twenty one. Little peep, R. I. P. R. I. P. Little peep, R. I. P. Uh, yeah, R. I. P. It was like pictures of him as a kid f- flashing up, and he looked like my brother, and I was like. Oh, that's I just yeah. like pulled my eyes out two weeks ago. Yeah, that would hit it. That would hit yeah. it. And then probably a week before that. Yeah, I watched. Don't like, be afraid to cry, boys. Then, I mean, Interstellar. I cry my fucking eyes out. Oh, oh we that's, did. Like, after after I, in the past dude, two years, that's end the, of it. That's like, the hardest like at of the end. At the, at the end of Interstellar, I ran to my ex girlfriend's house to make sure that she was still 
the same age as me. I was yeah. petrified oh. that she was going to be oh, eighty. So the yeah. scene where he talks to his, his daughter. daughter. Oh. Yeah, that's no, when she's old. That's, that's when I started scene. bullying her. Fuck it. He's watching the videos Spoiler. and he's crying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I watched that movie in the cinema twice. Yeah. He's cr- he's bawling his eyes out. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, such good yeah. acting. And I, I was one. like, also like, oh. oh yeah, no shit. Oh, that's right. Oh, feels man. That's, that's real feels. That's like my favorite movie of all time. Really? Yeah, that's a good movie. That movie so powerful. That turned me on to like I cry astrophysics. Oh, shit. That's right. I watched uh, on the flight back from LA. I watched Groundhog Day. Yeah, I cried at movies on planes too. Yeah, Groundhog Day. I watched an Adam oh. Sandler movie and I cried to it. When, like, oh, when we we're flying back from LA, I, I need looked, to cry more. And it was like me, me, Gus, and me, Gus, and Bryce sitting in the three seats, and then across the aisle was Amy. And I looked over and she was like bawling her eyes out. I was like, oh fuck! So when I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> she was watching the Disaster Artist. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I saw that. She's like in James Franco, yeah, and she's like. I was like, what's wrong? She's like, I was the disaster on I was like, what's wrong? She's like, did you just want people to like this movie? I know. I saw, <laughs> that, I, I, I saw that at Little Leaderville. Yeah, that was a fucking an amazing movie. I haven't even yeah, seen a, the fucking room. I, need I a, had seen the room either, but I saw the yeah. disaster artist. I was like, I get it. But yeah. Oh, oh, hi, Mark. I need, oh, hi. I need to watch the room. I need to watch both of those films. I did not hear uh, Everyone does that. I did not. I did not. I did not hear that. Yeah. Did I so? What is it oh, though? Hi, is it like so? What's the the director's name? The that did the room. Um, what's his name? James uh, Franco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Fuck, but we all know say? we all know the guy. And if you don't know him, Google it. But I'm too fucked up. Yeah, Google it. The room. Just but no one it. knows. Like, but he it had like a six million dollar budget. Yeah. And no one knows how he got the money. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. And 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 it was a fucking terrible movie as well. It was, but it, but what is it like? He did something right, though, right? Like, As it, or, it was so bad that everyone loved it. Yeah. But was it deliberately like? It was so, so unintentionally bad, bad. Okay, so that's, he, that's all I know about it. Is that like it was unintentionally terrible? And which it's, is impressive to do, though. Oh yeah. fuck! Like that's so I piss again. Yeah, and I gotta piss too. But yeah, I, so I why don't you to, just both fuck? I'll do a monologue. I'll do a monologue. I, I had to come for Amy. I was like, no, nah, it's all right. Like he got famous in the end because people thought his movie was so bad that they end up liking it, and his movie brings a lot of joy to people, you know. And she was yeah. like, I was like, yeah, you know, it's fine. You know, that's cool. He got he got what he wanted. He got fame and fortune. Yeah. Tommy was O. That's his name. Tommy was, was Al. That's his name. Tommy was Al. Yeah, Tubble, that's it. Tubble, yeah, it was a Tubble, like, Tubble, yeah. And like, no one knows where he's from. Like, he has he talks so weirdly. He looks really weird. No one just, he, no one. Where, you, where is he from? Estonia or something. What he reminds me of is I saw this documentary drama. It's like a biopic documentary called biopic. 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 I, don't know, I used to call it biopic. biopic. Yeah, but it's was biopic. like biopicals. But it's, I think it's biopic, like Bio biography picture. picture. Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's you'll love this, I reckon. It's called Imposter, and it's about this dude who's like thing, like he wasn't loved as a teenager or something from his mum. Yeah. So what he used to do is – Pathological he, shit. Yeah. yeah, so what he did was he posed as missing children so that oh. he could join the families of the missing children and pretend to be really? the child. Yeah, this is what the dude did. And he was in Spain, I think. And he claimed to be – he quickly went through this list of, like, missing children and claimed to be this missing kid from Texas. So he's – he and so he ends up going back to the U.S., the U.S. Embassy, like, gets him fucking back to America, reunites with his family. It's the first time they've seen this kid since, like, the kid was 12 and he's, like, meant to be, like – like they haven't seen him in like five years or some shit, but this guy's like 23 years old or something pretending to be like a 16 year old kid. And so, and he's got like, the kid had like brown hair. Like he had like completely different skin color, completely different like hair color, eye color. And he just claimed it all being on like being like tortured by whoever like yeah. stole him. But like, he was just talking shit. Like he just wanted to be in a family. He wanted a new family. It's a really weird Whoa. story. And then so like blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. And this private investigator gets like sus on it and he realises that the guy's like an imposter. He's like not really – what is this tripping out? He's like, he's like, wait a minute. This like He's like, this is a weird story. He's like, this is not the kid that was taken because he, he noticed because the only thing you can't change with plastic surgery is your ear. Yeah. Like shape. So he was like, that's not him. And then the guy who was uh, the imposter realised that the whole time – actually, this is spoiling it for everyone, but you guys need to hear it. 
So the whole time that he was with this family claiming to be this kid, whatever he didn't know, the family told him. And so he sort of realized that the family knew the kid was dead and they didn't know who the fuck this guy was, but they had to play along pretending that they didn't know the kid was dead. So someone in the family had like murdered the kid all of a sudden and 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 then, and the whole family knew about it but then all of a sudden this guy just rocks up pretending to be the kid and so they can't be like no that's not the guy because the kid was murdered because then everyone would know that they knew that the kid was murdered you know what you know what i mean so this Whoa, guy all of a sudden fuck. he's trapped in this house realizing that this family had murdered this kid and so he's like freaking out himself now yeah Dude, this watch is a it. German fairy tale shit. Some it's called, yeah, Gretel it's shit. called Imposter. And he did it like heaps of times. He's like a con man and he did it like heaps of times. Dude, Germans do scary horror movies. What's, I think it was Spanish though. What is this? Is this oh, like this is, is this a documentary on yeah, Netflix? Like or? fully, yeah. So oh, like this, yeah. The Imposter. The Imposter. Shit. I watched it on SBS once. It was fucked up. So like, yeah, this guy's fully just like <clears throat> ridiculously pretending to be a missing child so that he can have a family. Then realizes that, that the family knew that the kid was dead and they had to play along with him coming back in. Wow. So it was like fucking weird. What was his original family like? Just like Yeah, he had, like his mother was like never loved him, so that's why he did it. Mm. All right, I'm pissing. <laughs> Dude, watch the trailer right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, we need, that's what we need to do. That's we the did, next thing we need we to did do. We need like a screen. To like the back like of my mind. We need a tech guy. I reckon I reckon I reckon <clears throat> here's what I reckon. We need like a tech guy that we can offload all of our what we've learnt in the last six months on like a Jamie. We need a Jamie. We need a Jamie. We need someone that can sit right there at the end of the table where all the equipment is, monitor the cameras, monitor the audio, pull up YouTube. You know, there's there's got to be some kind of interface that you can have on the computer where you can um oh we all we do everything post though so there's got to be some kind of interface where we can bring up videos in real time hey we will and play them I feel like we do pretty well I think anyway, we do all right we set this shit up pretty quickly even though we're already at, we're like three beers deep yeah we did which by the way is a lot okay is a twenty three there's a lot there's a lot of shit we've had all to right, set up don't talk shit. We've actually, I mean, I don't want to blow smoke up my own ass, but I'll do it. Not like you haven't what been doing the whole <laughs> fucking tie. Yeah. What are we? What are we now? Six episode seventeen, technically, and we're uh, sixty-seven. We're killing it. We're moving. We're moving forward. I want to know what episode one hundred is going to look like. It's going to be. That's uh, going to be interesting. It's going to be a conspiracy episode. Extravaganza. Pro- probably. We'll. Pro- yeah. Yeah. We're going to do another conspiracy episode. Yeah. So Get deep. T- t- four hats. <laughs> Conspiracy ones are great. Like I'm fully into um this is like what I'm gonna be one day. I'm gonna be like an expert in Bon Scott's conspiracy of his of his death. So like oh, what, yeah. what the story is, um he was like a massive alcoholic, pretty depressed, and he was getting like bullied by the young brothers in, in the A C D C like they'll force him to do shit. I don't think they really liked him. And there was like talks of Bon Scott wanting to start a, another band. Oh uh, no. And, uh, and so then, and, but so what my theory is, so like between, he died in, in February, 1980 and ACDC released, um, ACDC released, um, Back in Black in May, 1980. So May and Back in Black at the time, cause this is before Thriller was the highest selling album of all time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like, so like, huge. Yeah. huge, it was huge. So between February and May, they lost their lead singer, found a new one, wrote, recorded and released the highest selling album of all time in four months. Shit. Come on. Come on. Did the death of Bod Scott bring a lot of publicity to the bed? They could have like it did. It was new publicity. Like they had a new label. They were with a new label in America. Mm. They had a new producer, new vocalist. Like, and so like, how did they find Brian Johnson in four months? You know what I mean? You don't if 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 you lose if you're like as big as ACDC in 1979, you don't just yeah. fuck around with your next vocalist. Like, you spend time on that shit. So my theory is they found Brian Johnson before Bon Scott died. 
And then Bon Scott was sacked, was really depressed, drank himself to death. Bon, uh, Brian Johnson was – and then they acted like they hadn't sacked – I don't know. If I end up dead, if, I, if, I, if, you, if I'm just floating in the Swan River, it's because mm-hmm. I've fucking found out what ACDC – It's because I found out what ACDC have done. So what what are we saying I, here? That, so that what they, I'm saying is that like they what I'm saying is Bon Scott might have. I'm not saying there's any suspicion around Bon Scott's death. Like he definitely, yeah. Like he probably drank himself to death. Robert but I'm saying mouth, yeah. you can't find you can't have your vocalist die, find a new one in four r- months, write, record, and release the highest selling album of all time in four months. You can't do that. So you reckon it's, they it's, were lining them up? It's yeah. a long t- Do you reckon? I reckon they were already, they already knew they were getting rid of Bon Scott. I think they knew that they were sacking think, Bon Scott. Do you think maybe they already knew that he had problems with alcohol? And oh, they, they were, knew that. They yeah, were already they definitely looking knew at that. other yeah. options. Yeah, because he was way yeah. before. Uh, like, you know, they would probably Whoa. say that he was an inoperable alcoholic, as well as he couldn't ever have the commercial success that Brian Johnson had, as well. And what? like, it's, it's always been really well known that ACDC were massive. Like success hunters. Yeah. yeah, it's also interesting what happens to musicians or the band when someone dies. Mm. Like Lil Peep, very recently, like he became huge. Probably mm. war fans that after he was like yeah. post- posthumously, they just XSS, like XXX, blow XXX, up. Tentacion. Mm. Yeah, but also like a, uh, uh, also that is an example. Also, uh, who else? Well, this is where like someone's died or like well, well, I mean Freddie Mercury, Nirvana, Freddie Mercury. Nirvana right here, Kurt Nirvana, Cobain, like Hinge. they've become a cultural icon since then. Tupac, Tupac. I'm just looking at he's, that poster of ASAP Rocky and thinking, ah, Tupac's right. in Argentina. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean, right? Like people will the die, you're, and then like they'll become saying, like though? immortalized via yeah, you're like, dying. You're more famous in death or something. It's yeah, like Jimi Hendrix, mm. Amy Whitehouse, course, probably yeah. Prince. I imagine they died and uh, they became. They had this all this popularity after they died. It was just like, what was Brian Johnson doing before, like maybe in the six to twelve months before Bon Scott died? I think you'll like this. Yeah. That's so <laughs> Brian Johnson, he sang in a band called Geordie. Yeah. From Newcastle. Right. And uh, Bon Scott is cited as having said like he saw Brian Johnson because he sang in a band called Fraternity. It's like a hippie band. He played the fucking recorder. It's terrible. Bon Scott, like, you don't want to see a video of Bon Scott playing the recorder. It's not cool. It's not rock and roll. But <laughs> yeah. Geordie came out. They played just, like, rock and roll, all, like, covers and shit. And he used to do, like, all this crazy shit on stage, Brian Johnson. And so then Bon Scott has, like, apparently seen him. Between Geordie coming to Australia, so, like, there's, like, Fraternity, where he's playing recorder in a band. Geordie comes to Australia. Next year you hear from Bon Scott, he's singing an ACDC, fully doing the whole Geordie thing. So, like, he had, like, ripped off his aesthetic from Brian Johnson sort of thing. And so, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I think, I don't know. I think, I don't know what, what it could have been. I think it's crazy because I, I saw a video of Geordie. I was like, what the fuck? This guy's like, Bon Scott's, like, totally ripped this dude off. And then I didn't know it was Brian Johnson. When I found out it was Brian Johnson, I was like, Whoa. But yeah. yeah, the plot thickens. Look it up, bruh. There's a sick book called um, Highway to Hell, which put it paints everything about ACDC in a real bad picture. Is God Highway? To, is it true that Highway to Hell is uh, uh, raffles? The raffles, yeah, yeah, that's yeah what, man. If you ask Lewis Montague, that's Caddy, what it is. Caddy Highway is that? Fucking is it what it is? Uh, is it Caddy Highway? Caddy Highway. I'm not raffles. kidding. I, I've, I've, I'm pretty sure it is. I've heard a lot of people I mean, say I that. I hear that a lot, but I don't know. If that's just I heard that for the first time last weekend. That's what yeah. Lewis reckons. Is it? But I mean, it's meant to be the. It wasn't here that told me it. I think, but I think it was like it's got to be. No, it's I've heard it be from like people that were around the time. Yeah, from friends' parents that it was. Yeah, the raffles. Yeah, raffles. It's the raffles was like a rock and roll central, raffles, right? It's I think in 1979. By the time like it was 1979, I don't think ACDC had spent a lot of time in Perth. And yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, like, I'm sure yeah. AC, ACDC We're, moved to from Perth, the UK. Well, like Bon Scott is, but ACDC oh, yeah, okay. moved to the UK in about 77, and like. And that whole time, they were like, they come to Australia like maybe once a year. I don't think he would write a song about 
Perth. I don't yeah. think he'd write. I don't think he'd write that. I think it would be yeah. about the relentless touring that they were doing. Yeah, that's just one of the things that I've yeah. heard. Of one of those myths. Yeah, like, it's kind of that, like there's lots of those in Australian or? rock. It's yeah, a bit like fucking like when comedians like ball out like, like fucking Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, and then they just start making jokes about airplane food and shit. <laughs> like you know that's that's that that becomes phenomenal. their that becomes yeah. their life. It, yeah, right. it, it's so it happens so often. With all the biggest comedians, they just get into a lifestyle that's so detached from reality that their jokes are like Eddie Murphy. Just shut the fuck up, <laughs> Adam Sandler. Go, go go for a walk down the street and get get a get a grip on reality and make some jokes that are, you know, real. That's right, Jerry. Yeah, that's right, comedian. Uh, fuck no, you, Jerry. straight up, man. That's um, that's not even my own belief. Keep that's, it fresh. That Will seems Kinsey to be the general out the comedians. Subway yeah, fresh. That seems to be the general consensus among comedians is like when they ball out they just get so like detached from reality that they can't that's why i like tom segura yeah because he keeps getting involved in the culture yeah and, uh, that's why i like fucking documentaries Christ- about serial killers chris D'Elia. he's he's grounded in reality keep it fresh that's why i like rory low do you no i do i've watched him yeah, we love Rory Lowe. I've watched it for many, watched him for many years. Local comedian, Fremantle-based comedian Rory Lowe shouts out. Yeah, please contact <coughs> us. We'd we'd love to get him on the pod, please as well. Oh no, does he? Oh. I I'm actually dying to have a comedian on the pod so I can just like go toe to toe and I'm just banter funny, out. I'm pretty funny. Yeah, I'll be, let I'm me go. Funny. Let me go. <laughs> what can I do? I got jokes. Yeah, still okay, jokes. Okay, here we go. Still like, I, got jokes. I got dad jokes. Yes, like, sir. I got dad jokes that my band doesn't believe me that I wrote. That, that's my crisis. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what's what's wrong, Declan? It's like my band doesn't believe me that I wrote such a sick joke. I said, so all right, we were driving through like rural Victoria, and there was like all these like big round hay bales, and I was like, how did the hay get to the bottom of the hill? And they're like, hey, I'm like, it was at the top of the hill, and then it said, I'm gonna bail. <laughs> and I wrote that. I fucking wrote that on the spot. And they were like, "You didn't write that. That's an old dad joke." It's like, well, I've never heard of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard, heard of it. See, that's what's like. That's what being a band. They'll fucking try and deny you of any fucking. You know what's what's that word called? Credibility. No innovation. <laughs> They'll deny yeah, you that. of any innovation, <laughs> any inspiration, anything you create. They'll yeah. just be like, "You didn't fucking write that." We should um at least that's what I think though. <laughs> I I don't normally discuss my like issues with your friends. Like my infant ideas out out loud, especially on pod. Who even had but, ideas um, when they were infants, man? <laughs> I wanna get a fucking live show going. Um, I think that could be another Yeah, live avenue. shows are fun. We should do <laughs> I like talking to lots of people that are uh, yeah, at Wait, once. I used to think it was terrifying, but then I realized that it's better. Matters. Next time you're in Perth, yeah, we should just fucking turn uh, like a music gig on its on its head and do a podcast. And do well, yeah, we can't, like we support you <laughs> instead of yeah, the, no, sh- legit, the show just legit. talk. Like you guys, Have you guys heard that? There's like our our tour manager in America showed us this podcast of these dudes. <laughs> And they just tell funny, like they, well, not funny. They tell stories from history, mm. and then like two dudes do like, um, like voiceover. Drunk history. Not, is it drunk history? Yeah, it's a show where they like. It's like a podcast. So what, one person like, gets drunk. Yeah, it like recites right. the history of it, and they get people to act Go it down. out. They could be. Is that what you're talking about? It could or? be. And yeah. like they were talking, like someone was telling a story about like you know someone traveling through America on a horse back in the fucking 1700s or yeah. some shit, and it's mm. like. That was a boring podcast. We, we as much as do. I hate it, like true crime is the best podcast. Yeah. Like I've got to two live podcast shows already in my life. Oh yeah? So I'm Fuck. a fucking nerd. We, we we should break the whole break it open on live music, right? And next time you're in Perth and you do a show, mm. like put up like put us up. As a support act, yeah, and don't sure, yeah. don't tell anyone. That I'll talk to our booking agent we're about not, it. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anyone that we're not like musicians. Okay, and we'll just come out and do like a like a stand up 
That's a terrifying Set. prospect. I don't know. No, 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 you no, told no, me no. before. Crazy though. You told me before. Hey, like, oh, I was considering dropping on you that we're going to have bad cousins of the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. only when it's confirmed, and you'd be like, "Hey, he's coming on next weekend." Yeah, that's that's kind of like my fun little thing. But like how lucky is just ben to drop it on him? Yeah, he gets a share of me. He, he has ben. so much drive. He's like, I'll <laughs> message anyone. He's like, yeah. I'm going to get on the chief scientist. The chief WA scientist. You know, like, what? I got there. <laughs> there's, there's a cool story I got a about um, <laughs> Helicobacter uh, yeah. stomach ulcers. Oh yeah. There, okay. There's a per, there's two Perth residents that have a Nobel Prize. Actually, maybe really yeah, two Perth doctors discovered that um, stomach oh. ulcers weren't. Caused by stress or caused by bacteria. Got bacteria. I've right. heard this yeah. story. Hello, bacteria. Yeah, and he lives, the dude lives in Highgate. I was watching yeah, a documentary right. in high school and I saw the dude's house and I was like, I fucking know that house. And Do it's you remember in Highgate. the name of the documentary? Oh, it would be like Four Corners or like fucking, it would be Four Corners or 730 Report. Yeah, yeah get the guy on. He's I yeah. love the microbiome. Shit, yeah. Dude, I want to talk about Yeah, that'd be right I'd up love your to alley. Talk about the bo- they were at yeah, like yeah, Royal definitely. Perth Hospital and then I don't fucking. know. He had an idea. He was like, I think, he's like, you know what? I think stomach ulcers aren't caused by stress. And so him and another yeah. doctor discovered that there was a bacteria that caused stomach ulcers and a way to yeah, treat bacteria. it. And then they the won whole, the, no- the microbiome. No that's a crazy field, dude. Anyone should Google it. My go- look into your microbiome. Microbiome? Take a shit and send it to a lab and tell them what it says. Yeah, I heard that they found out that there was a meth problem in Bunbury by testing the sewage water or something. Ooh, really? Oh, really? Wow. That's what, Just from their urine or? That's what um, Steve, our driver, told us. We had no this guy, way. We had this mad dude, Steve, who picked us up from the airport and he's been driving us around this weekend and he was saying that they found out that Bunbury, they weren't even like testing for anything. They were just yeah. like, let's have a look at what's in the sewage water in Bunbury and they found out that there was like heaps of meth there. People were pissing meth down the toilet. Holy shit. Man, fuck meth, man. You know what? Meth. <laughs> fuck that. Fuck there's, meth. There's actually, you know what? I don't even know. How do you even get into meth? There's better drugs out there. You can like hit all the other better drugs first. And if you're like, if you're, if, if you've done all the other drugs and you're like, oh, maybe I need to do like Something all harder. of them. Just then, abuse then MDMA try meth. every weekend. Don't do but meth like, every weekend. Who the fuck goes? Who the fuck goes from drinking, having a beer at their fucking eighteenth birthday party with their dad, and then all of a sudden, three years later, they're hooked on meth? That's bullshit. Fuck meth. Don't do it. That's my shouts out. Sorry, I feel, feel passionately about that. Like, it is, I've not heard a fucking good thing about meth. I've no. just heard that people just get methed out and beat up grandmas and steal their fucking money Jeez. and shit. One of my best friends was he was on meth. Like, well, we were best friends, Beth and then he got onto meth. And now we don't talk anymore. <laughs> I haven't actually spoken to him in years. It just sounds like the most hectic drug. I mean, anyone that anyone, is, I don't even know how much reach this episode is going to get. But anyone out there that's even like, in, well, I mean, like we got a lot of meth fans. Has. Oh God. Well, I, I, I then it's even more them. important. I embrace them. Like anyone out there that is like in a situation where they've got friends that are going to offer them meth or they're kind of curious about it, just, just don't do it. Here's the hotline. Go and do LSD. Here's Will's number. And and think about what the oh, fuck you're yeah. doing mushrooms in your life. Mushrooms are way better. Go and do psychedelics. I'll, I did mushrooms. I advocate that every day of the week. Yeah, I did mushrooms two nights this week. The mushrooms and we watched the State of Origin, me and Lewis. He oh, it. that's interesting. Yeah. So we we did mushrooms at 5.30 p.m. We we're going to watch the State of Origin. started at 8. We started watching it. It was fucking boring. We went to the casino, watched it again. We were asleep by 12.30 and then I woke up for England versus Croatia. Yeah. That was boring. But uh, the morning after mushrooms is sick because last time I did that, last time I did mushrooms, I had this idea for this like cool sound that I wanted in a song and it's in the song now. It's in our next single and oh, I'm like, sick. fuck yeah, I came up with that. Oh, morning. okay. I didn't come up with it on mushrooms but the morning after mushrooms. And then the next cool thing, the thing that I found out on Thursday morning it's like you look at my name, Declan, on like an iPhone and then L looks like an I. So then like there's Ian in my name. It's like Deck Ian, Deck Ian. And I was like, that's the thing that I found out this morning. 
You know, like that, that's that's my morning after mushroom thing is Ian's in my name. Like that afterglow. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's not as good as a cool sound that I can put in my song, but I was like, you know, it's still pretty crazy. You know, I found Ian in my name. When yeah. you when you do mushrooms, what's or any psychedelic really? Like, what's your goal? Like, do you oh. is it? Do you want to do it for like introspective no, no, exploration none of that shit. or you're just no. like, I just every, want to have a sick time? Everything I need to know, I can just Google. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like if you want but, to understand yourself and no, stuff. No, no, I don't need to understand myself. Um, yeah. The first time I took mushrooms, it was just like, you know, real young and I was at a gig that I just played and this dude was like, I just picked mushrooms today. You want one? So I ate like two whole ones. And that was it. That was a bit fun. It was a bit weird. It was pretty weird, actually. It was a bit weird. Yeah. And the next time I took mushrooms, I took it and someone had like dried it out and put it in a cap. And we played a gig in my old band. And uh, it was sick. There's a recording of that gig. It's fucking sick. And I, I was talking like the funniest bullshit in between songs. And then we did a video. <laughs> this is 2016. We did a video interview after it. And I still haven't seen the interview, but I know I was fucked up in that video. Me and my bandmate were yeah. just looking at each other laughing because we were both on fucking shrooms. Then this band <laughs> called Distrends came out and it was the Queen's birthday. That was the occasion for the gig. And they came out and started playing God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols. And yep. two of them were dressed as those royal guards, the red thing with a big oh, black yeah. hat. And the singer was dressed as the Queen wearing this glittery That's so dress good. with a Queen mask. And they were playing God Save the Queen. And I was like on shrooms. All the lights were so bright. And I was like, whoa, I need to get out of here. This is fucked up. That looks way too fucking real. And then as I was leaving, there was like an old man sitting on a stool next to the door. You don't see old men at gigs very often. He was just sitting there like this. And I was like, fuck, like. I just want to touch this guy's face because it looks so rubbery to me. I was like, I, was like, I want to see if this Textures. is. A, I was like, this this looks like a mask. I want to touch his face. I know it's a mask. I just saw a mask on stage. Just another mask. Why is like, is this a mask? Is this real? Are you even here? Like, I didn't even know if that guy was really there. If I just imagined him because he was just Ooh, sitting he just there. Grabbed he, his face. He wasn't even talking to anyone. He was just sitting there. Like, I was like, what the fuck? And then they were projecting this um, kung fu movie, and me and my bandmate we were like dude like animation has come so far and uh, <laughs> and, and and our friends were like what are you talking about and i was like this fucking movie man like yeah. this cgi is so good and they're like dude that's not cgi like that's actors sure, like, like that's real shit yeah. and i was like no way because like the lights <laughs> like the way it was reflecting it, it looked so sick and that was like the last time I took mushrooms till like whenever Steve Kelly's birthday was. I took mushrooms at Steve Kelly's birthday. Yeah. The last time I did it was on my own <laughs> at the beach on in the beach. dark. Spontaneous. On your own at the yeah, beach. Yeah, on my own. own. Yeah. That sounded good. How did you even yeah. come back from that, mate? I'm surprised. It was like a rite of passage experience. I was like, I'm going to try it. It was impromptu. I was like, the sun setting. I'm going to take my shoes out. I'm going to uh, drive to the beach. That's took brave. Half an hour. Took a, I took it 20 minutes in and it started kicking in while I was driving. Mm. I was like, I'm going to get to the beach. I got, they just yeah. sat on the beach and watched the stars. Mm. Fucking, I saw I, so many shooting stars. I was so tuned into it. I could see it all. One one Wednesday, fucking awesome. I was, I took a pinger on a Wednesday afternoon and I was pinging as. And That's I was, a song lyric. Hey? I took a pinger on a Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. And I was pinging as, yeah. <laughs> And I went out and I went to get the train home while I was pinging. And I was going down this escalator and I was going. <laughs> which is a King Gizzard lick. Yeah. And no kidding, at the bottom of the escalator was Stu from King Gizzard. Yeah, oh, no shit. shit. And me and our drummer. I think this is even, this was before the band. Animal Synchronicity. And yeah. And we were just going down. And we looked and we were like, oh, shit. And we're like fucking off our face. And we're like, all right, actual, actual, actual. So we went back up the escalator and we're going up the escalator and we're like, all right, in three, two, one, we look back and we go, and he's looking dead at us. I was like, oh shit, that's so embarrassing. And so then I was like, fuck, that's so embarrassing. Like that's, I can't believe we just did that. And then next week, or maybe it was like two weeks later, uh, it was a Friday. I'd taken a pinger. I was pinging. 
and I was walking down the street in Collingwood, I, like early days of this festival, this festival was on at the tote and I was walking through the streets of Collingwood and I saw Stu from King Gizzard and I was like, dude, and I was like pinging again. I was like, dude, like, Fuck, man, I was coming down an escalator at Melbourne Central and I was singing cellophane and, like, I think you saw me. And I'm like, I just want to say sorry because I didn't know you were there. Like, sorry about that. And he's like, no, that's cool, dude. I was like, so what are you doing? He's like, I'm at a, I'm at a Bucks party. And I was like, sick, can I have a photo? And I was like, for my Halloween, it was Halloween. So for my costume, I dressed up as my friend who had a moustache. So I, I drew a moustache on my face. And I looked wrecked as, especially because I was pinging and it was like still <laughs> yeah. sunny. Got a big ass smile. Like yeah, I was like, oh. goofy ass. Got the photo and then <sighs> flash, you know, go forward. Um, <laughs> so that was 2016. That was 2016. Yeah, flash, flash forward, yeah, and now we're on the label. I don't think they know that story, which is great. Oh. <laughs> It's Shout, great. Shouts out King Gizzard and the Lizard yeah, Gizzard. I have a story about every single member of King Gizzard. It's like I remember when I, I met all of you. Like that, they don't know that like I, I think I told them, I don't know, but like the first time I met Cookie, one of the guitarists from Gizzard, yeah. added him on Facebook. He didn't accept the re- request. First <laughs> member I Shit. met of King Gizzard in 2015 or yeah, 2014 was uh, Mickey Cavs. He doesn't know that. Stu might not know that I'm the bloke who was going down the escalator singing his song. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, now he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's it's those um, those are the stories I have. That I can't get over just how many albums those guys put out. Mm. Like it's like it's fucked three, up. Three, four a year. They did five last year. Yeah. Five a year last it's year. Fucked up. And that's, I think I've got twelve albums. And I just I just sit there and look at their artwork in you know <laughs> during certain levels of. Yeah. Fucked up. Like when you, look at, when you look at the Koi Chara, Koi oh, Chara album cover. Do you know Koi Chara? Is it that same session? Yeah, I know, That's like, uh, uh, I know Blake. Um, yeah, right. Koi so, Chara, because he plays in Hideous Sun Demon and Jake's a, Jake, yeah. not Blake, is a good friend of mine. Well, Blake's a good, uh, Blake's a friend of mine too. But yeah, yeah Jake. Yeah. Hey, Jake. I've been messaging Jake the whole time I've been here. Susie, that's what I call him. <laughs> <laughs> Koi Chara, the magnificent, the music they make. I just fucking love it. Magnificent. And the that so the album Marvelous. cover that they have for Koi, the album Koi Child is fucking. I could look it's at that for like I have looked. I have spent an hour looking at that. Yeah. Who was it? Hannah Atchison. Ha- Hannah Atch- Atchison. Atchison Shouts yeah. out Hannah Atchison Atchison's did the artwork, Atchison. and it is just something to fucking. It's incredible, and I mess because <laughs> you know I message fucking anyone. Here we go. Ben. I messaged yeah. Koi Char and I was like, oh, where can I buy a copy of your like art, album artwork? And they never got back to me, but uh, I'll, I'll hey, fucking go yeah, around that. I'll figure I'll it out. Blake. Definitely, yeah. man, if you could, because yeah. I, I want to get like a canvas. Like Knowing Blake, though, he probably would not know. 40 centimeter by 30 centimeter, <laughs> big fucking canvas print of the album artwork right behind me. This. Like I want yeah, that. We'll do these ones. Yeah, I love that. We're going, guys, we're, guys, going, this, we're going off the cuff. This is, this is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're now we're at the grand final and we're fucking talking like pre-game. Brian Taylor. <laughs> How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Grand final, blah, blah, blah. Ew, final blah, blah. teams in Darling, Lacroix, yeah. Kennedy. <laughs> what do you think about this? What do you think about the game, boys? Yeah, uh, yeah, no. yeah big out this week. McGovern not playing. I think they'll still get up over GWS, but... uh, Brad's yeah, still out. Saw back. Yep, you know what that is. Obviously, yeah. artist pubes probably. Yeah. Yeah, look, boys, we put in a four-quarter performance and a um, bit sloppy in the, the final 50, but... We just gave you know, it all. We followed what we did in practice this week. <laughs> 110%. Buddy Franklin converted all his free kicks and uh, we you just, know, some good marking, good tackles and all around, you know, hand passing the ball well, we moving just, the ball we around. Just, we just tried to catch the ball when people kicked it at us and we just tried to tackle them when the other team had the ball and... Kick hoped, it long. Hope that we got it through the goals more. Kick it long. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, BT. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, folks. I don't know AFL terminology. Like, I know soccer, but there's certain, you know, there's like nuances to the language that you use when you're talking about a sport. Do you know what an inside 50 is? Yeah, I, th- I think I can. So that's like every time you get the ball inside your 50, your 50 as Max, in you're Max attacking 50, 50. Yeah. But there's Do nuances. Do you know what a percenter is? One, one percenter? Yeah, one percenter. Nah. No, nah, we'll never oh, clue. Okay. 
when spoils but it's shit. like yeah it's like in soccer though you have like I don't know, offside there's all there's different terminology no, like there's um simple. Oh, offside oh, there was one word there was one word in the footy what was that word fuck there was one that I just like it has it has two meanings in AFL and it's all about like the context. I can't remember what it was though, but I was like, that's interesting. There's like one word for two different things, but I can't remember it now. It's hard watching uh, footy in Perth. It's on earlier. You don't expect it, you know. Like, oh, it's different times. Oh, all with, the time. Yeah, we're two mm, hours, two hours behind. behind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm actually stoked to be back in the time zone that I was born in. Yeah, fuck this yeah. So like the two yeah. hours of my life that I had lost, I've got back. <laughs> What are you doing with that two hours other than talking shit with us? This is it. I was, I'm spending three hours now, I think. I don't yeah, know. We're, we're pretty deep in. How we're pretty are deep we? in. What are we? We are like, shit, this is our longest hey, one. This is hey, definitely wh- our longest, but it's two hours and five minutes. What's Good. <laughs> to, talk, to talk specific theme, I don't even know if we have the SD card. No, but it, it lasts for ages. It'd be good. Uh, <laughs> all right. What's a, what's a, have all the Stiffles live show like? Um, I like the word abrasive. Abrasive. Yeah. We've been That's described awesome. as amyl nitrate as in it gives you like a 10 second high yeah. and then followed by a piercing headache, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. I think that's a great description. There's lots yeah. of, lots of energy. You get covered in some liquid, whether it's spit, water, beer. That's yeah. nice. So and like a puncture is like do, quick. Do you think like there's any the fucking just mm, like punk? Look, we're a bit of semen quick. No. Is that another liquid no, that could semen. be? No, never. Never? I've never seen semen. Absolutely not. Gets a key. Semen? <laughs> well, I just thought Did you like, say semen? Yeah. It's a dirty word. <laughs> it is. It's hard, to, it's hard to just It's usually semen. champagne. We got champagne, champagne going. Wait, we'll yeah. see about my let's, buying action. <laughs> let's, we'll, let's sling some semen tonight with the gig. Just to, <laughs> so, so, so next time you talk to someone, yeah. you're going to be like, spit, blood, semen. sweat. I only sling semen. semen in private, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm not gonna go somewhere it's like semen. See, this yeah. is, what's, this nah. is what's wrong with private school culture. <laughs> <laughs> They're all slinging semen, man. This is not private school culture. This is, this is personal trauma. This is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It's, sorry for all the private school boys out there that don't sling semen, but we do. We give you a bad rap. If Luke Buller <laughs> hasn't already. <laughs> if. If I've beaten him to slinging semen, I need to take a good hard mm. look at myself in the mirror and go, what am I? What am I? Dude, you should tell As that story about Mitch Marsh. Speaking oh, of semen. No. <laughs> 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 Didn't you go to school with that guy? I did. Speaking of semen. And- Wait, I saw him hit a fucking hook shot over to Mr. G's house. Yeah. Yeah, on Rossard Oval. Massive Ooh. six. Mr. G. Big boy. But he would have been like oddly hapty, happy. Hapty. Hapty. But <laughs> Cheater on also his pissed. Yeah, so, that was a So thing. he could have played footy, I heard, Mitch. Yeah, so that was – this is the only – this is the only memory yeah. that I have. Will, Will told me this story when I was uh, 18. I don't <laughs> believe it still. No. Yeah, oh, have, I to- have I told you? You Th- told me yeah. about how he came into your classroom. That's right, yeah. This, I'm proud of this memory. Yeah. This is how you help shape the future captain of the Australian cricket team. That's right. The only memory I have of Mitch Marsh, because he went to my school <laughs> and, I, and I went to his school, so I have a memory of him, is he walked into my English class with Miss Hodgson. Shouts out, Miss Hodgson. Shout outs. And oh, it was so funny. She's such a cheeky English teacher. Mm. Uh, he walks in, <laughs> needs the keys for the classroom next door to our classroom. The teacher goes... Why, why does he need the keys? He's 18 years old. He doesn't go to school anymore. <laughs> no. He's choosing between cricket and footy and he needs the keys to a classroom at That's Wesley right. College. What did he leave there? He's So he's, try, he's trying to get into he's his He's not class. picking up his fucking English books, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he, he was pretty diligent with his studies, I, I guess. But So his teacher was late to class, so he needed to get into the classroom so everyone could get in. Comes into our classroom, says, Miss Hodgson, I need the keys next door for room 314, whatever the fuck it was. She chucks him the keys. He catches it. She goes, she said, nice. She said, this was around the time that it was like people weren't sure. Where will he go? It was kind of a thing in the media. It was like, I Where guess. Where will he go? People weren't sure. Was it footy or cricket? She throws him the keys. He catches them. She says, nice catch. You should play cricket. <laughs> 
And I thought that was pretty Miss fucking Hodgson, funny. fucked up Mitch Marsh's life. He could have played for the Western Coast Eagles. He could have been a fucking Brownlow medalist. I've yeah. never seen him play footy, but he seems, you know, he's got the face for a Brownlow medal. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Miss Hodgson. You fucking ruined his footy career. You, now guys, he's... Talking, you guys talking about me? <laughs> hey, uh, Mitch, a good mate of Mitch. Mitch be a good, guy, a good I, mate of mine. I, I could have played AFL. I hope he's not watching because I'm sec- secretly want, want to get him on the podcast because I know someone who knows him. And I'll oh, fucking, I love him. I'll take it. Him. I'll take it, man. I know Ashton Agar too, through Lewis. If I know anyone that knows anyone, <laughs> Shut up, buddy, hey. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to get them on the podcast. I want to get fucking Nick now on the podcast. I want to get Ben Cousins. I want to get fucking Luke Steele yeah, from Empire no, I'd of the Sun. To, I'd love to talk to Nick Nat. I want to get fucking John Butler because I know he lives in Fremantle. Joe Let's Butler. get Dusty on. I want to get Dusty, Dusty on yeah. next time Richmond play in Perth. Mate, I want to get fucking everyone on this goddamn podcast. The question on everyone's lips about Dusty, does it hurt does to he, get a neck does tattoo? He, does he do flow takes? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can he walk on water? Yes, he can. That's how I, that's how I become like a, a oh, surrogate I got Richmond a story. fan. I got a story. I got a story. So yep. we're driving past Punt Road, which is where Richmond train. Yep. And we're looking. We're looking. We just got. We're like driving everyone from band practice. Road. Yeah, everyone Melbourne. in Melbourne. It's yeah. Punt Road. That's and Richmond. We're, we're like looking. We're like, oh, Dusty, Dusty, where's Dusty? I'm looking at Richmond practice. Where's Dusty? Oh, fuck off, friends. Where's Dusty? Fuck I see him. And so we're all like, oh. And we looked to the car to our left and it's a Mercedes with mad ass tinted windows. And we're like, oh shit. And it's fucking, you won't believe it. Guess. Dusty, man. No. Oh. Dusty was practicing. No. <laughs> Who? Guess. Uh, um, Kevin Bartlett. No. <laughs> uh, is, it, is it a footy bloke or is it some fucking. It's a cricket player. Oh, cricket player. There's only one cricket player. Uh, Who was the one cricket Glenn player? Maxwell. The one cricket player in the world. There's only one. Uh, Matthew Hayden? No. Shane Ward. Yes. It was Shane Ward. I thought he supported St Kilda. Yeah, be able to No, he was in his car. It was, we were just like driving down the road because you can see Richmond's practice. And we're like, oh, right. We're like, oh, we didn't get to see Dusty. And I look over and it's fucking Shane Ward. I was like, I was, do. I was tripping over my words. I was like, <laughs> man, I was looking for Dustin Martin. I wasn't expecting to see another Australian sporting legend here. And he goes, ha, ha, ha. Let's hope he has another good year, hey? I was like, yeah. And he was, you could see he was like looking at us, like computing in his head whether he wanted to be nice to us or not because there's like three dickheads with a mullet in a RAV4. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's, that's, that's back. <laughs> He's like, where's this going? Is this going on to send us your number to Warney or is this going on to your legend Warney? He couldn't tell. And yeah. I was like, your legend Warney. And then I went to the pub that night and I was like, oh, fucking met Shane Warn. And I told everyone, I didn't give a fuck. I yeah. didn't give a fuck at all because. Why would you? No, you, you wouldn't. I was Warren. on a high. I was like at the bar and I was like, I met Shane Warren. I was like, my mate was like, how are you doing? I was like, yeah, I met Shane Warren. I was like, yeah, I heard you from the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I fucking did. He's all St. Kilda. He used to play for St. Kilda. St. Kilda, like yeah. The juniors or whatever. That supports him. Could have played for St. Kilda. Do you see a lot of famous people around fucking Melbourne? So... Uh, Mark Murphy at my local Coles. So Ricky Nixon's at my local Coles. Ricky Nixon? Yeah. Fuck. Bomber yeah. Thompson lives down the road. I've seen, uh, get to see Tim Rogers a bit. He's like moderately famous. He was just on talking about my generation or your generation, that game show the other night. Do you reckon you, yeah, there's more famous people in Sydney or Melbourne? I don't know. In I Sydney. I want to say Melbourne. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. Bro. I'm detached from the East Coast. Well, man. I mean, Will Smith. Yeah. My friends saw Will Smith in in Melbourne. Oh, but do you know who you never see anyone? Beyonce as well was in Melbourne. F- fucking Canberra, fuck Canberra, right? Right. I've been there. You. You've been there. It sounds like a fucking. It just sounds like the worst place ever. Like, it's like, cold for the capital city of a country. Like you would definitely pick Melbourne or Sydney to be the capital of Australia. No, but you can't. What would you pick? If you're an outsider. What would you pick as a Western Australian? Uh, Rockingham. (laughs) I would say Mel. If I had to pick the capital of Australia, I'd say Melbourne. You see, like, it's like Melbourne. I mean, Melbourne's not curious. Melbourne should be the capital of Australia. Yeah. But to be honest, it would ruin our live music scene. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that? (laughs) No, no. We just know that, you know. Too many squares. Look, there's enough, there's enough souvenir stores in Melbourne. We don't need to make it the capital. Oh, Do you think it was stores. like a strategic move from the Australian government to be yeah. like, Cause let's like, just get somewhere that's out of the way? Because with Melbourne, yeah. we're like, we're like, like yeah. you know we're, what I mean? Melbourne, it was like, as the 
were de facto capital of Australia. They were like, look, we don't want to be capital of Australia. We don't want to give the responsibility to Sydney, so let's build Canberra. That's yeah. what happened. It's true. I, I know. It's like Sacramento <laughs> being I studied, conspiracy. I studied politics. <laughs> it's like Sacramento being the capital city of California instead of like yeah. Los Angeles or San Albany Francisco. is the capital of it's New like York. Sac- New York's not the capital of New York State. Albany is. Yeah, Dude. just pass it off. Like how you do the work. Yeah, that's like that's like a, any any soccer team. Like the captain is usually like the strong, dominant player, but Shattered there's heard. always like the Shattered there's heard. always like the Shouts Ronaldo. Out. There's always like the trickster or the right. star of the team. They're never <laughs> the captain. They're never the captain. Melbourne's the star of our country. I I believe that. I'm not being fucking weird, perf, resentful for Melbourne. I th- Melbourne is definitely like the best city in the Where to go? Like oh. I'm sitting here in Perth. I've it's never not true. Yelling up the best <laughs> yeah. town in the country. I've never been to Melbourne, but I'm like Melbourne's fucking what? sick. You never been to Melbourne? You've never been to Melbourne? Fuck no. Well, you never been to Melbourne? I've, well, I've, I've been to Melbourne once, but not as an 18 year old. I was going there with the army reserves. So <laughs> I'm a bit going. They a this again. Bit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start on the army reserves. Fuck. <laughs> they literally <laughs> said to us. Ah, this again. <laughs> They said to us, you can't leave the hotel. So, I I mean, I know what the fucking, whatever hotel it was, I know that, but I don't know Melbourne, you know what I mean? I saw a, nice, a few nice cars in the car park though. So Yeah, they got good cars in Melbourne. Yeah. You see a lot of Lambos, a lot of Ferraris. Yeah. But we saw some cool cars today. I saw one with bubbles on it. I saw one that's number plate was Defcon. Defcon, yeah. yeah. They were playing like music. Well, dude, we were just fully. We were in time. Add something else. <laughs> I would, de- I would definitely be keen to, ki- to like carry on, but I'm like concerned that we're that something's fucked up or like the. No, it's, it's all fine. fine. No, when, no, it's just, when I took a piss, are we good? The, it was we're good. Recording. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, let's push on. All right. How, well, how long have you got? What time have you got to? I got to be at the Rosemount at six. Oh, it's all right. It's five oh five. Luke Muller finishes work at seven. Seven. So. How are we going to play this? It's five oh five. You got to be there at six. six. Are we so just going to? Are we just going to bail out of you're here? You're driving just, me, dude. I'll, I'll drive you to the <laughs> race. Now. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind. I'll steer, oh, dude. I'm, if you're pissed, I'm pretty. I mean, I don't drink and drive, so yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll. You guys coming? Go to the you guys bar. coming? It'll be fun. Sure. Yeah, I'm too. I'm too many drinks deep to just to be like that's it. For tonight, I need a pee. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. My ears this, this, from the fucking headphones. I, now. This episode do you is know brought if to you're you actually by playing tonight, or are you not sure? Medication. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Definitely, we're, we we're playing two sets now. We're not playing any. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not you're not going to play it always. It's not anymore. I just it'll be sick. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm too many beers deep. When I when I'm like, you get me like five beers deep, and I'm just like, what? I'm impressionable, you know. I'm like, I'm like, whatever's whatever's happening tonight, I'm just gonna fucking go along with it because I'm like deep enough that I'm like, oh, this is like we're in like the world of I- intoxication. Let's see where we let's see where this is gonna well, go. No, the world is yours, Will. Exactly. The world is your oyster. It is, as in it smells. It smells weird. I'm glad we got these pop filters, man. They're, they're made a Seven big difference. Seven straight my days. Anyone that's actually still listening right now, because this is <laughs> this has been a tr- fucking a testing podcast because it's a we've trip. been it's been it's been we it's fucking musical chairs. We've been going back and forth, and that's okay because I've got to piss, and I'm I'm not going to hold it in f- for your sake. So fuck well, you. All right, just everyone leave and just let it be me. Yeah, but. Any, anyone down. that's still tuned in, um, I lost my train of thought. What I'm still about? here. <laughs> we've had a good time and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the, the stories we've been t- telling and we're probably still going to keep, we'll probably stretch it out for a little bit longer. Kaleidoscope. It's like when you're, it's like when as you're the jerking data, off. And as you've... long as the data reaches, we can. Kaleidoscope is yeah. a band, yeah. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. Yeah. Gyroscope? Kaleidoscope. Like, what's that kaleidoscope thing? Isn't that a band? I thought it was gyroscope. Is there kaleidoscope and gyroscope? We don't know what half uh, these fucking I think that's the name are. of the festival. I went to the footy once and gyroscope played. I saw him <laughs> at Big, Big Day Out, like 2011 or some shit. I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers there. Let's talk yeah. about guilty pleasures. Nelly Furtado. 
Nelly Furtado? For bis- uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, she sings in Spanish. I love it. I'm like a bird. I could crash my car. <laughs> <laughs> Good reference, man. Um, McVitie's Digestible Chocolate Coated Biscuits. That's my guilty what? pleasure. Oh, Sorry. Wait. wait. Oh, wait is it just music? Did you music? say Werther's Originals? No, 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 no. no. Fisherman's Friends. McVitie's Digestible Chocolate yeah, I don't know. It sounds like some old man shit. What the fuck? Biscuits. Do you have digestive- it is old man shit. Do you have digestive Thanks. problems? No, they're just good. <laughs> this is what you do. You get, you get a good. packet, open it up because yep. you got to open it up. No. Grab the biscuits out, break them in half, drop them in a bowl, make a fucking hot coffee or a tea, dip each half biscuit in the into the tea or coffee tea. until this it is sort very of melts. British. Yeah, fuck yeah it is, man. It's my guilty you pleasure, man. Then you eat it. Bastard. It's fucking great. Try it out. McVitie's digestibles. Try Go to Coles, Woolworths, you can get them. So, just try it. This is going to be in your territory here, Will. I'm playing FIFA 11 at the moment in <laughs> FIFA 11 in career mode. Oh Jesus! And I'm managing um, Manchester United, which is a crime. I'd hate to knock Sir Alex Oof. off of his throne, but <laughs> I'm managing. Are you uh, killing it? Yeah, I'm killing it. I got um, I got a great team. Oh. Um, I sold. I'm not kidding. The first thing I did. Sold skulls, sold fucking Vandas. <laughs> sold skulls. The Vandas. Yeah, I don't care about legacies. Vandasar, you sold Vandasar. And I sold Vandasar, and I sold, uh, uh, stole, sold Neville. Gary Neville. And I sold. I'm gonna sell gigs. I don't, gigs. I don't yeah. care. They're all I tell a bit you old. What, I tell you what, especially in FIFA 11, they don't have stamina, and I can't, I can't keep them on the team for a full 90 What's, minutes, and I need yeah. that from a midfield. You know, I need, I need. At least two of them <laughs> to be on the field for the full 90 minutes and not be in the yellow on their energy. Yeah. Because if it's in the yellow on their energy, i got that OCD that I'm getting them out of there. You know what I mean? And it's bad when you start a game and they're on yellow and you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Look, to be honest, no fucking, uh, you know, mad respect to Sir Alex Ferguson, but I've never had yellow on a start. A start. <laughs> <laughs> What's your formation? 4-4-2? Four, 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 no, no. It's, uh, yeah, it was that, like, uh, it's, it's What's the default one for FIFA? It's like four, four, two. Yeah, yeah, with the brackets two or something. No, four, four, two. No, it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so four defenders, four midfielders, two strikers. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah, you yeah. got? Two you know strikers who, and the and the, and the wings. Well, it was Van der Sar, and then I bought. I bought. This is what's crazy. I bought. I bought the keeper for France, Loris. Luis. <gasps> Hugo Lloris. Hugo uh, Lloris. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2010, though, I bought him. Yeah. Oh, and now in 2018, he's playing in the World Cup final. Him. So he must, he must he's kill like it in the game. The in, in, yeah, he's great. He's destined for greatness. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, And I know this. And I'm not kidding. This is the second time I've done this. But I was playing NFL. I bought a bloke. I can't remember his name. I remember his last name was Bell. He was a fullback. I bought. Yeah. And so I was Peter like playing. I was, yeah, <laughs> I, was playing, I was playing as Philadelphia Eagles. I was running them in franchise mode. I bought this fullback. No kidding. Six months after that, the actual team bought the actual player. Whoa. And I was just like, have you seen that movie, The Surfing Ninjas, where the dude's <laughs> playing the video game and he's controlling his brothers? Have you seen that? No. Ah, well, that's what it was like. I was like, I just control. I could run an NFL team because I just bought a player in the game who they just bought in real life. Yeah. I was like, dude, I preempted this. I was like... I should have got them on the phone and been like, dude, I told, I could have told you six months ago that you need this fucking player. You know? It would have been way cheaper. Yeah, it would have been way cheaper six months ago when I bought him. What's the... Give me a job. I'm 17. <laughs> Did you get hired? Yeah. yeah. What's the rest of your squad look like then? Like, what are your defenders? Do you know any? Yeah, I got O'Shea. I got, O'Shea. Is it, this is 2010 we're talking about here. So yeah. like, I got O'Shea. I got uh, Vidic. Rio Ferdinand, yeah. is that his name? Yeah. yeah, that'd be right. And um, Evra. Patrice Evra. And then in the mids, Midfield. I got uh, Valencia. Antonio Valencia. Nani. Ren- Nani. Ronaldo, no, it would have been 2011. It was Nani. You know Nani? You know. After yeah, Ronaldo. And, Nani. Then, and then Michael Carrick or? Yeah, so I got Carrick, Fletcher and. Yep. Uh, Rooney and. Skulls, Rooney, Berbadich. Berbatov. Berber- Dimitar Ber- Berbatov. Yeah, who's Berbatic? I don't know. Berbatov. Yeah. And I got Hernandez, Michael Owen. I didn't know he fucking played for Manchester. You know? For a little while, yeah. That's fucked up, mate. What happened? He went to- from Liverpool to Man U. Yeah, what's Go. your fucking deal, cunt? I know. Jeez, that's like going from Wales to England. Sounds like he's chasing the money. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe Man U even bought him. Yeah. Really, though. He, he would have been like over 30 years it old. kind of useless. Yeah. Nah, fuck that. I don't yeah. know what the fuck you guys are talking about. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But anyway, 
I've only lost a couple of games this season. I'm doing well. Talk about the Eagles. Why are you playing <laughs> FIFA 11 though? And why not? I, got the, I got the World Cup fever. I started watching it in America. I was watching Germany versus Sweden at like 2 p.m. in America in Austin. It was fucking like 35 yeah. degrees Celsius. And but what about like FIFA like 18? I've only got Xbox 360, so. Ah. <laughs> I bought FIFA 11 in like 2013, <laughs> 2014. Are you are you at the stage where you take like consoles on the road and shit? No. Like, fuck yeah, let's sort it out. Uh, I'm not. The only games I play are sports games. What do you do on the road to entertain yourself then? Podcasts. Do you listen to podcasts? Yeah, fuck podcasts. Yeah, like, what, like, have you ever like? Have you you like? You've never enjoyed a podcast until you've enjoyed it on an eight-hour drive. Like podcasts. Yeah. Podcasts yeah. are mad on a I drive. I play them all day, every day. I, we I listen, run and listen to podcasts, but not um, drive. We listened when we were touring Australia. We listened to S Town. Is that a music that? podcast? No, no, no. S Town. It's like it's like a um a branch off of um this American Life. S Town. Okay, yeah. S Town's good. It's like eight episodes. It starts off. It's like this dude in Alabama, he's like talking to a producer or like a podcaster. S-Town. S-Town, yeah, look it up. Straight up. So this dude, he he like messages this guy who makes a podcast and he's like, you should investigate this. This dude murdered someone here at a house party uh, and do you know what? Oh, it's just like that Wait, genre of like crime. Is it like no, a true crime? True well, crime. It starts sort of off. So shit. like what happens is. The de- this is like the description. I remember the description. This dude like emails this guy. He's like, dude, you should come down to Alabama and investigate this murder. This kid murdered this kid at a house party in Alabama and he's going around town bragging about it but he's not getting arrested and he's like the son of a like wealthy lumberjack family who their business's initials were like KKK lumberjacking. <laughs> And so he was like, you should come down and investigate this. So the dude like goes down and investigates it. And when he gets down there, he's like investigating it all. And this guy's like telling him all Jesus. about it. He's like, he's like the town like fucking whistleblower. He's like, this is, he's like, I fucking hate this town. S town stands for shit town. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I hate this town. But then the dude investigating it finds out that they're not only did the dude not murder him, there was actually no murder at all. And so then, the podcast becomes about the dude who emailed him. The co- podcast becomes about the whistleblower and that dude's life. Jesus. Holy shit. It's, it's not that heavy, but it's just like, it's one of those things. It's like, it's just about this. It ends up just being about this dude's life and the dude is like, just interesting. Yeah. It's not amazing, but it's interesting. So, and uh, we listened to. So you all, li- you all listen to podcasts? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like we just play it on the car like through Bluetooth or through the Fuck Oscar. Yeah. So we just sit there and we'll just like doze out and what? we'll listen to it. The other one that we listened to was that big one. Was it uh, Serial? Yeah. We're, we're, the Adnan, the Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's that the one that started the ball, like all the yeah. Serial crime yeah. podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, we listen to that one. And so like we listen crime. to an episode, it goes for like an hour and then we like discuss who we think fucking That's awesome. It. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's like – it's. I'd never knew that I could enjoy a podcast. I never, I'd never listened to a podcast until we were on tour, and someone yeah. was like, "Let's chuck in a podcast." I was like, "What?" That's awesome. I don't think yeah. I'm allowed to play my podcast that I play, like <laughs> intense nutrition podcasts, like really. Oh, that yeah, you need to have ridiculous fitness podcast. You, you need to have like a like, laptop there to look up mm, what yeah. the fuck they're talking about. It's like what? 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 One another one that we listened to is like a music one, and they interviewed the band about the how best. they wrote the songs and shit. So there's like one about you know that song "Young Folks" by. Peter Bjorn and yeah, Ben. It's like <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and interviewed Katie Tunstall. There's one interviewing Courtney Barnett as well about depressed and that one's pretty interesting. She's also the We yeah. listened to uh one uh, about a murder in Melbourne. This woman was murdered in Melbourne and like they were trying to find out who did it and it was like turned out that like there was two pedophile priests who were like running a cult and like sacrificing people and murdering people and the what the murder's still unsolved, but like they were like they were abusing the woman's child and she confronted the priest about it and ended up like being murdered in her house in Melbourne. And it and so like it was like meant to it's like half about um finding out who murdered her because it's still like this is like from the eighties and then it's also about this uncovering this uh cult in melbourne like a fucking religious satanic cult who are all posing as priests or something 
There's another one um, about – there's a new one with ABC about um, – uh, an indigenous dude who was uh, murdered in Toowoomba, I think. Yeah, in New South Wales. Is that right? Toowoomba? I don't know. Yeah. I think so. And he was found on the road, like train tracks, but he oh, wasn't. Oh, I read that. Yeah. It's new. It's a, that's a new one. That's a good one. That was hectic. Yeah. It's like just another massive cover up one. What got you into podcasts? Like, it's like literally just because, like, um, it's like driving for eight hours between cities it's like um it's like you can only play so much music before someone gets sick of djing or sick of listening to yeah. music so it's like we just may as well listen to a podcast what what is it about like podcasts that people just wouldn't get sick of it like is it just that it's like new information yeah new information i'd say like yeah everyone's learning something it's like yeah it's just like it's it just like an audio book, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, you know, it's just nice. It's like someone just talking to you and you can – they're easy to fall asleep to. It's hard to fall asleep to music sometimes because, I don't know, especially if you're like a musician, you, you tap into the music and you either count along or you think about it or something. So, like, it's a, it's a nice way to sort of almost meditate or something, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think the first one we listened to was S-Town. I, I Actually, I don't know, but it was like it's just interesting. It's like it's just like a good way that you can either switch off or be active. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you can do it both ways. We try. I I like doing. I I'm trying to find like a good conspiracy one. I like good conspiracy ones. We were listening to ones about Area Fifty One and Men in Black as well. Not yeah. Men in Black the movie, but the actual. Do you know about like the actual Men in Black? Nah, nah. nah. Yeah. So like. There's a couple of theories about Men in Black that inspired the movie is that one was that Men in Black were an alien race who were trying to cover up the existence of aliens and they were just like super pale people who just wore like black tuxedos and like if and they would like silence or intimidate people who yeah. thought they saw aliens. And then the other one was that they were a secret government agency who um were employed to intimidate people who thought they saw UFOs. Both of them are bullshit, absolutely bullshit. And they like think that the alien race can heal people and shit, but it's like there's you no... Sh- you yeah. should listen to the Doug Trussell. The what? The Doug Trussell Family Hour yeah. podcast. Yeah, you'd get around that. I think yeah. you should, you'd get around that. We listen to like this Irish one, conspiracy one. There's like these three Irish blokes talking about Michael Jackson. I was yeah. like, where is this going to go? Like <laughs> what conspiracies? Because they, they, uh, like, they were talking like, they're like, we're going to talk about fucking like Oh, blah, 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 like, you know, his career, fucking blah, 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 blah. And it's like, whether he existed or not. And it's like, what? <laughs> 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 whether he existed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how did he become, is, it, is he one person, you know, mm. how did he become white? Was he really a pedophile? Is he really dead? And it went for like Jesus. three hours and I was like, I don't really give a fuck, really. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, you should check out. I mean, Joe Rogan's like the gold, st- the gold standard of podcasting, but any. Joe Rogan episodes with Duncan Trussell. Is Joe Rogan that guy from UFC? Yeah. He's, <laughs> really? he's, so he he's a, a UFC commentator. He's a comedian and he has a he has the most successful podcast out like, really? a, like available. Like I mean he, uh, on YouTube alone he's got 2.8 million subscribers. Like wow. it's it's huge. It's fucking huge. It's crazy. And it's it's very similar to this kind of style long format. Um, the very, very, very similar. Even in the shots, like not, mm. not that we're copying him, but mm-hmm. it, you, you know, you're, you're quite limited it. in what you can do with podcasting. So this, just, this is what it is, what it is, and we're just making our own content. Um, Joe Rogan with Duncan Trussell. There's like maybe like seven or eight episodes. Fucking fantastic. Dun- Duncan Trussell, you, you would absolutely get down to that. Yeah, like check it out. I, I don't. I mean, I haven't met any of your band members, but I think. Based It'd on what fun. I'm yeah. getting, is you guys would fucking love that shit. Um, I but, like. Um, there was another one called Criminal. Yeah, and they just talked about like it's like really abstract crime because when you think like crime, you think like straight away like oh murders and serial yeah. killing and shit. But this one was like, like there were like 15 minute ones. There's one about the black market for those uh, Venus fly traps, the plant. Because yeah. they only grow in one place in the wild, wild now. There's only one place in the world that they grow in the wild, which is in a, a uh, national park in North Carolina. So there's actually like a black market for them now. 
And then another one was about when like what laser jet ink jet printing first came in, how people were counterfeiting money. Like it's like really petty crime and really like mm. personal accounts of crime. Mm. Like um, it's like, it's not like this is what happened to America when counterfeit money came in. It's like, this is like, was one person's story about how she involved, came involved in counterfeit money and like one person's story about like how they're involved in the black market of Venus fly traps and how that, yeah, it's, Cool Jesus. ones like that. I don't. It's, it's like it's not heavy at all. It's like it's just really interesting. It's like, you know, it's like who knew there was a fucking black market for Venus fly traps? You know, <laughs> in North Carolina. Yeah, like, it's what? like North yeah. Carolina. I think they were for like sixteen dollars a seedling or something. Shit. And so like like drug dealers are like giving up on drugs and starting to sell <laughs> fly traps. Of course. Yeah, and like breaking into um, nurseries and stealing their fly traps and shit. Jesus, what does that say about like the, what? like if you? I mean. Oh, we're going to go into a weird sort of tangent here, but if you legalize like drugs, like how quickly people that are drug dealers would move on to other substances that they could sell on, on a black market kind of well, when, yeah, you know, establishment. Like when, when, you know, certain fruits aren't available anymore, there'll be a black market for that shit. Yeah, it's like, there's yeah. only one place in Australia where pineapples grow. So then all of a sudden everyone's just going to fucking burst in and fucking... What what are your what are your beliefs about um, drugs, drugs legalization? I think it's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea. It's like every time you legalize something or make something legit, it ends up being better. From like, you know, first allowing women to vote to fucking, you know, same sex marriage to and like then legalizing like, yeah. weed in the US yeah, like, and like yeah, legalizing weed. It's like you think like everyone's like oh everyone's going to become a stoner, but it's like over there like the country still works, you know. Yeah, like, they're still what, making. What do you actually think about weed in for face value in your own personal experience or in the experiences around you? What do you think about it? I don't know. Like I mean, a lot of the people that I know that are stoners, I don't really enjoy their company because like I don't know, they're just not that fun to be around. You don't meet a stoner who's like, let's do something new tonight, you know? Yeah, they're kind of set they're their usually ways. Like, let's smoke a bong and watch this movie that I've seen before and, you know, and you're like... Yeah, that sounds kind of... Yeah. It sounds, it's boring, but like um, when we were smoking... That's, that's not necessarily how... That's not, of course, that's not everything. All people that smoke weed are... Yeah, are I like, mean, like, I, I mean, if it works for you in a medicinal way, that's cool. But like, I mean, when we were in America, it was just like, chill and everyone just did it it was like like you'd go out and get a drink of your friends it was just it was like yeah you just go out and get weed smoke some weed yeah and, and it was it's you know it's better weed like you know because that way you actually know like you know there's like what sativa and indica and like with weed in a show it's like you buy something you, you don't know what it is it's fucking bush weed Whereas in, in, <laughs> it's in job, america sure. you can choose what you're getting you know what i mean yeah. it's like you could get like moonshine or like if if alcohol was illegal and, and someone's made like some fucking alcohol in their bathtub you don't know how strong it's going to be exactly you know yeah. it's, it's regulated and it's and like with me i don't really care about like it's not like i don't think like we have to legalize this shit because of like safety or anything i think it would just be like it'd actually be really good um for the economy like oh for sure like amsterdam tourism would be unreal and like just like you know like the amount of people that would be in jail because of selling drugs it's like if and that all those co- people that weren't in jail money. yeah exactly it's like if those people weren't in jail you know that's that's how i, I think i look at it from yeah. like a political perspective is like just legalize that shit it's like if you outlawed alcohol the amount of people that would be like fucking making moonshine would just be like yeah. fucking out the door you know what i mean there's i was at the bird last night shouts out the bird and um shouts out to everyone and um, yeah, I was just looking at the fucking people behind the bar serving alcohol. And I was, and you just, some, like, next time you're at a bar and you just think about, like, it, it, you've got, what, you, what you're actually seeing right now is people behind a bar, which is like a secluded area inside an establishment where there's, like, this illicit substance that people are serving and, you know, responsibly, responsible service of alcohol. And, like, you think about it. It's so weird that we have such a culture built around the legalization of alcohol. It's so weird. Mm. When you think about it, like there's there's so many other recreational drugs that we could be doing. If we could 
legalize them there could be like establishments built mm. around like like weed cafes yeah. like that's not even a weird thing if you're listening you think that's a weird thing like you mm. just don't understand it like the like one of, there's like two legal like two authorized opium plantations in the world one's in like like the Netherlands, I can't remember, Austria, and one's in Tasmania because they have the perfect climates for growing opium. And when they first introduced it, everyone was like, well, you can't do that because everyone's going to break in and do opium. But it's like the five dumb cunts in the area will be doing opium, but all the people who need opium for like medicinal shit can mm. like benefit from it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like that thing. It's like, um, it's like, you know, legalizing like fucking driving. It's like there's going to be five idiots who – fuck with their car but like yeah everyone else it's really fucking good i mean i just think if we legalize shit you know it'd be good plus drugs would be cheaper standardized cheaper, safer regulated the revenue that we would generate through tax would we be able to put into support mm. programs for people that can't handle their shit mm. Go too crazy yeah. with the yeah. weed because <laughs> like people there's definitely a majority of our population that could recreationally enjoy smoking marijuana for sure it it's there's it is no less damaging than mm. alcohol it's it's probably less damaging most, than alcohol well yeah all, i mean it, um, it undercuts the black market unregulated scene mm. yeah then you don't you don't know what what you're getting all of a sudden, you don't have gangsters out there fucking shooting each other because they're worried about who's selling. Are you selling fucking weed on my street corner? Fuck you. I'm that's s- not this- happening in Australia, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not. But that's a big part of like, yeah, but I mean, the legalization like, in America. That's what like everyone is like. I don't know. It's like everyone just talks about like how not dangerous it is, you know, compared to like alcohol. But it's like, I don't know. I don't think people should be really talking about that. It should just be talking about like, how good it would be if everyone was just no one, you know, it's like teenagers wouldn't have to break the law and, you know, shit like that, you know, mm. it'd be cool. Yeah, it would it's like be just good. keep moving the goalposts. That's what it is. Moving the goalposts is like, yeah, this teenager is breaking the law, smoking weed and watching cool movies. And it's like, that's it. But if you just move it to this teenager is not breaking the law, doing the wrong thing, don't do fucking weed. If you're going to do drugs, do like, Coke in America or MD. I feel like <laughs> I feel like we've established like cities and societies, uh, you know, as we've sort of emerged from like a tribalistic kind of culture and someone's, you know, it's at some point someone's got to take control and, you know, someone's got to be in power and then all of a sudden you've got to like, exert that power over a population of people and we've kind of maybe like jumped the gun a bit and gone too far with kind of the rules and regulations and all the things that we've got in place and then we're sort of slowly but surely you know as the internet's come through and people and and the people that are in these populations have had more of a voice and more of a chance to speak up and sort of like put their opinions forward they you know the government sort of responded and now we're seeing like this kind of like we've jumped the gun a bit, but now we're kind of coming back and going, okay, maybe that was maybe we were a bit too harsh with that, and maybe we we're too with alcohol prohibition, maybe we were too crazy over there, and then oh now you know maybe we we shouldn't have made weed illegal, maybe we need to sort of look at that again. Yeah. And now we get we're actually getting closer and closer to a point where it's like just let humans be humans. Exactly, we're getting closer to giving people more individual freedom. Um. As we're sort of, yeah. You know what I mean? Lightning. We're sort of emerging yeah, like from the, this like tribalistic. Mm. Now there's more psychedelic research going on. Yeah. Like there but was a period where it got shunned, but now it's yeah. coming back again. There's definitely a point, um, yeah, sort of lost my train of thought there, but there's definitely a point where we're kind of, um, you know, it's uh, we're sort of being oppressed for it for having, you know, for individual freedom is being oppressed. And I think absolutely that's it's sort like of changing choosing, in America. Choosing in who particular. can, you know, get married and choosing what, what exactly. you can put into your own body. It's like, yeah, yeah you know, it's like, it's who, like who, stop who, telling me what to do. Yeah. You're like, so many cultural rules. Yeah. Can you cultural imagine, restrictions. Can you imagine being born in, into America like 20 years ago and you, you, you start to learn about the world that you're living in and the country that you're living in. And they're telling you, you can't smoke this plant. That just naturally grows. Gross. Can you imagine that? True. On that That's note, crazy. I actually need to go now. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we've been we're getting How close. long are we going for? Jesus. Um, two hours 45. That's a fucking beast. Holy Boom. shit. I yeah, love it. We've been going for a very I've long time. I've had fun. This has been really good. <laughs> let's, let's do it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, no. Do you want to? All right. Let's just pack quickly. Yeah. Do you want to? You want to plug any shows? So I mean, I don't. I don't know if we've got many European mm. listeners, but you're doing a big European tour, so. Yeah. Well, anywhere in Europe that you are, we'll be there. Anywhere in America that you are, you might have to travel for a little bit, but we'll be there. And, and then. Yeah, and you could listen from anywhere in the world. If you anyway, miss, so. if you, yeah, I mean, yeah, if I mean, just email us if you want to see us, and we'll fly you. Yeah. Whether you live in Antarctica, <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne, we'll fly you from fucking Fitzroy to Collingwood. Or what just send us do, do you have dates? Do you have dates for? I don't have Europe? dates. There's nothing to plug. Nah, every, everything. Not, not much. Everything people want to see, they can, they can, uh, they can just see our Facebook, but. We'll have a new okay. song out in September, which will be very exciting. And Snapchat is Amil. Snapchat. No, and, we don't have Snapchat. Uh, it's not Snapchat. Instagram. Instagram. Amel. Uh, Amel and, and the, the Sniffers. Sniffers. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, I, I mean, you'll probably they'll probably get all their information there for tour dates. Absolutely. And Everything. European things. Mm-hmm. And so you are doing an, an America tour yeah, after that? Yeah, doing an American that? tour in October. We get to Ghana Fest September 29th, Ooh. which is like we get, we're going to be there for the grand final. Uh, which is daunting if tigers are in it, but should be fun. Sweet. Well, we're, you know, this episode will come up in about a week. So if you have any more information, we'll chuck it in the show notes Boom. and stuff. Yeah. And back in Perth, December, January. Who knows when it's hot? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can talk to you again then. Skirt. Do, do, do. Cheers, Check fellas. them out. <laughs>